Just say that. Say that again, Inks. Okay, just re really, no, really no. close. <laughs> oh, okay, right next to the microphone. Okay, uh, because we are we're live now, on the. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's Teapot trying to. He's like, I'll be yeah. saying something controversial. I better <laughs> start the stream. <laughs> so, uh, Inks, what were you what were you saying about insider trading? That, uh... Nothing. You were uh, you all. were involved we in the insider all... trading. Uh, we wow. did a whole we, we did a whole episode on that. And hmm? you should go uh, watch that one. What a what? what oh, wait, we're email. live, by the way, Brazil. I I know we're live. Okay. I still can't see. You get that's why I didn't. Stream. That's why I didn't mention the contents of the email. Oh. Oh. Okay. Wow. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, how's everybody doing today? Shut how up. Was, how was the northern <laughs> ship? Piece? The what? Northern Shiver Peaks, how was it? It's good, it's still going on. I'm not the northern northern Shiver Peaks? No, just the I'm in the southern Shiver Peaks now. I think he was in the south now? He was he was asking well, you about your home. your hiking your adventure. adventure. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, yeah, that was that was actually the southern Shiver Peaks. That was uh down in uh you know Mount Washington area. I'm gonna stop playing Guild Wars 2 right now and start listening to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a first ever for uh, for Tito? It's possible. Yeah, it's teapot, possible. Uh, teapot apparently is interested in me. Oh, it's his shirt. What? Your shirt. My shirt. At, at. It says oh. barely. It barely. Has a bear yeah. on it. It does. Oh, hey, you're would, you, you you describe yourself as a bear, Brazil? Is that, what you, yeah. <laughs> is that what you you identify as? Yes. Identify as a bear? Yeah, you know, I think... Uh, uh, that's, Brazil that's a, just won't render for me. I don't render for you? Yeah, you're not rendering. You what won't you render down? Uh, you just, you're a spinning circle. Oh, okay, oh, nice. That's good. Uh, yeah, Maybe that's brutal. what he truly is, a spinning circle. Yeah. Inks, let's talk about uh, that time you got recognized in real life. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah here we that. go. Story time with Inks. Here we go. So, jeez. Uh, so <laughs> It was bad, huh? <laughs> it, it, was, it was not great. And uh, uh, if the guy sees this, my apologies. But, uh, you know, I, I think I'm a pretty awkward kind of person in real life until, um, until I feel comfortable in an environment. So... Yeah. Uh, so Friday we went out to lunch. Uh, I've been working part time, and we all went out to lunch at this burger place. And this guy, the the oh, waiter. Oh, you and your work people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it gets even better. It gets even better. Yeah. So now the the, the nonstop joke, the jokes at work. Yeah, fun times. So this guy approaches the table, and he goes to take our order, and he st like he's staring at me oddly. And the other guys at the table, there's four of us in total, the other guys at the table are giving their orders, and I, I go to look at him, and he's, he's giving me this weird look, just like he's, he's staring at me, like he's trying to figure out something in his head. So I give him my order, and he, he, he goes away, and he comes back a little while later, and he goes, he says, I know you from somewhere. And I'm like, I, I don't think we've ever met. I don't, you know, I said, I'm sorry, I don't recognize who you are. And he goes, he's like, no, he's like, I've seen you somewhere before. He's like, I can't quite place it. So anyway, the meal goes on, and towards the end of the meal, he comes back, and he's like, I figured it out. He's like, aren't you, don't you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> and the other guys at the table oh stop what they're doing, and they, 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 they're, everybody is like now staring at me. And I'm oh like, my oh god. god. Oh no. Did you, did you go like, let, can, can we take this outside? Just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. And he's like, yeah. He's like, you're, you're inks, right? And I'm like, yeah, that, no. that's, that's, that's me. He's like, he's like, I used to watch your videos all the time. And I said, oh, well, that's, that's really nice of you. Thanks. He's like, yeah, I don't play Guild Wars 2 anymore, so I don't really watch your newest videos. But he's like, when I did play Guild Wars 2, he says, I used to watch your videos all the time. And I was like, oh, well, thanks. You know, if you ever start playing Guild Wars 2 again, you should check the videos out. 
So he's like, he's like, nah. He's like, the game's dead. I'm not really playing anymore. <laughs> he's, he's going on and on and on, and oh, I'm just like good. listening to him. So eventually, he 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 walks away, and the other guys at the table are saying, the other guys at the table are like, what what, what the hell is he talking about? And I said, it's I said it's a video game online, and uh, I said I cover it. I I make some videos about it on YouTube. So that was pretty much like the encounter there. So we get yeah. back to the office, and, and then everybody looks it up. <laughs> right. So at one point, I, I'm working on something across the room, and I asked this other guy, John, to hand me a cable. And he's like, you celebrities are all the same. He's like, I, I can't fucking stand yeah. celebrities. He says, I hate you guys. He says, you know, get off your ass and get the cable yourself. He's like, I'm not your, your little maid to run around and, and get shit for you, right? So he's like, they're all making a joke out of it now. Nice. So this, uh, so the secret, one of the secretaries comes in, and uh, they're all having a good laugh, and she's like, "Oh, what's everybody laughing about?" So, one of the guys tells her, "Oh, he says, oh, Rob here is a famous YouTuber." Oh God! So she's like, "Oh, like PewDiePie?" <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> "Exactly like PewDiePie." I was like, yep. "Just like PewDiePie, except yeah. he has 46 million subscribers, and I have 5,000." Holy shit! And she's like, "Oh." That doesn't seem very famous. Like totally oh! over Ouch. her head. Ouch. And I said, that's why I'm working here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. goodness. That is See, so uh, ch chat's on to you. They got you. You you made a slip up. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. I said my real name. I don't really think it's that big of a secret. Oh, that reminds me of uh my story where I met someone that recognized me. So as some of you guys know. Uh, I play a card game on Saturdays sometimes. What card game is that? Brazil? It's called uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Gathering. <laughs> Yu -Gi -Oh! Anyways, so... Uh, it was either the first... I think it was the first time... I, the first or second time I went to the card shop. And I get there and I think, okay... Because I'm, I'm pretty paranoid. I think, do I put my real name on the sign-up sheet or do I put my fake name? One of my fake names... I thought, there's no possible way anyone here is going to recognize me. I'll just use my real name. So I put my real name on the paper. And I play the first game. And, you know, I kind of win. The second game, I lose. And after it's over, the guy goes, Hey, do you play video games? Oh. And I was just like, <laughs> no. <laughs> What's a video game? <laughs> and I was like, uh, so I was just like, yeah, I play video games. He's like... Hmm. hmm. Do you play Guild Wars 2? And I was just like, Shit. yeah. Shit. <laughs> and he says, you have a YouTube channel, don't you? And I was like, I didn't really say anything. I was just kind of like this. And he's like, no, it is you. I'll pull it up on my phone. Uh. So he gets his phone out and looks it up. He's like, yeah, you're right here. And I was like, oh, all right. There, there we are. So now, nice. now people out there, uh, you know. Well, would people, you like to hear you, almost as cringe as uh, as Inks's? But it's not as bad. It's it's kind of funny actually. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so at my wedding, uh, the <laughs> the father of the bride gets up to make a speech, and uh, basically it was like an eight minute long speech because he didn't have anything written down where he was just trying to remember what he was trying to say. But half of it was talking about how I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> called World Avengers and encouraged everybody oh. there to go check it out. Oh. And, uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but he, there was a reason he was doing it because he was, like, talking about how the, the really cute Minecraft videos where, like, uh, where, like we recreated the, the proposal and stuff like that. That's but, cute. That's weird. <laughs> is it weird? No. Okay. no. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. So that was, uh, was fun because I think... Maybe ninety percent of the people there did not know about that. And <laughs> now everybody I know in the world <laughs> knows all about your it. closest friends and relatives. Oh, That's friends. like whenever I go back on Saturdays, it's like there's a guy and he walked up when I was like paying coming into the shop on Saturday. He's like, Hey, I saw your Exodia deck on YouTube. It's pretty good. I was just like <laughs> Stop. Stop watching me. And like every time I go there, like I don't I don't go as often anymore. 
but like there will always be a couple people they're like yeah i watched your video like it was cool i was just like why Stop, you don't even, stop you don't even play my yours video. too. Why do you? What do you? And like every Except for the quality Yu-Gi-Oh con quality Yu-Gi-Oh content. Yeah, occasionally one of them will like leave a comment on something, and it's just like ban. Just immediately, <laughs> I just ban them because like I, I don't want I don't know I don't want people to know about me. I, I just really it, it bothers me. So nice. there are people in chat that have like found out my name. Because I made a few errors yeah. along the way in oh, some videos that, that I've uploaded. Yeah. So you gotta be careful with your Eugene. tutorial Eugene. videos, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's Eugene, <laughs> right. My my real yeah. name is actually Ben. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> holy shit, Brazil. Brazil. Says, this is why you guys are not successful. You yeah. don't even want people to watch your content. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big part of it. <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't got anything nearly as good as that, but I I don't know, the the kind of slightly awkward moment. That I've had in, in real life to do with Guild Wars 2 was was um was at Gamescom uh, last year, and there was kind of a, there's an arena net kind of gathering thing like there was at PAX. We all we all go and you know arena net. They give us food. And it's great. Um, and I, I was there with Droya and his girlfriend, which is obviously already a little bit awkward because I you know I'm a li little bit of a third, third wheel, wheel. there. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit of a third wheel already. But I thought Droya was gay. Stop, now you know stop. you learn something every day uh, and and we're, we're sitting down you know we're you know, getting the food and for, for a start this is just a kind of incidental piece of awkwardness but uh, the food is basically all meat you know we're in germany they love meat it's just pure meat this is it's just basically so he is gay we we, <laughs> we got handed out just a massive platter of meat basically various animal pieces uh, and Dora's girlfriend is uh, is vegetarian, so this is this that that's already pretty awkward. Okay, so she's not eating anything. You know, everyone's just kind of eating the eating the delicious meats. And so you know, that's, that's fucking good. You know, whatever. And then this guy comes up. He's um, he's, I think he was from the from the states, and he he has no idea who I am because no one knows who I am. But he knows who Dora is. He says, oh, yo, know, hi, hi, hi. You're the you're the you're the Deroyer guy. You know, you make the you make the YouTube videos. And then, and then, and then I, and then you go, oh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's Dry. I make, make the mind spikes, guys. I was like, oh yeah, I know you from your, uh, from your, oh god, I know you from your, your guides on how to do, what is it, um, Liadre. It's, oh my god, it's, oh wow, that's great. And, and, it's, and then he kind of looks at me going, oh, uh, I don't know who you are though. I says, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ, fucking demolished. Oh no. It's, oh yeah, I, I, I do YouTube as well, <laughs> Twitch, it's, oh, oh, and then he actually kind of semi-recognized me because he was watching the stream at Rezd, because I, I was streaming from Rezd, oh yeah, I, I think I, I think I saw you streaming some, some Rezd gate, yeah, fucking lols in the chat, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty awkward actually, and then he sat down next to us and it got really weird because he, I don't, it was just, it was pretty silent, it was, that was fun. <laughs> At PAX, at PAX East, uh, Shin, Shin uh, the streamer, recognized me. He took a picture with me and everything. Yeah, sure yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it, was it, was it not, uh, did he not take a picture with Dini? No, no, with me. Well, you're basically the same people. Exactly. He, he thought he was Dini Kong. <laughs> I've actually uh, usurped him entirely. I just, like, absorbed his body, in fact. Um, that's why he doesn't make any videos anymore. Uh, but you just fused, you merged no, into one being. No, but at PAX East, somebody actually did recognize me. Um, it was some guy working the event, like as a volunteer, I think. Uh, and I had no idea how to deal with it. So it was just like, yep, thanks, <laughs> shake hands, see you later. <laughs> and then I, I probably should have said, like, I probably should have had a conversation with him or something. But, meh, I had no idea what to do. I just left. Should have should have forced him to uh, buy stuff off you. You know, get a, pay money for a signature. Wall of boots. Wall of boots, spurs. I had a great uh, interaction with Izzy Cartwright, who I was sitting at a table with a bunch of other people, and there was a girl there trash talking Triple Trouble Worm. That was a terrible event. Arena has no arena, and this is at the Arena Net party, by the way. Uh, ArenaNet has no idea what the hell they're doing. They should just stop trying to make these world bosses because they're all terrible and they're getting worse and blah, blah, blah. And Izzy happens to be walking by when she's going on this rant of how terrible oh, no. and shitty ArenaNet is. So he stops and he comes up to the table. He's like, 
hey, what are we talking about? <laughs> oh. she, sh she shut up right away. She didn't have the balls to continue to say how it was terrible. So I'm like, oh, well, so-and-so here was just telling us how terrible Triple Trouble Worm was mm -hmm. and all the devs who worked on it. And he was like, I see. What's so terrible about it? I said, I don't know. You're going to have to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> what happened then? Did she just upset? She, she, she said nothing. Yeah, she was totally embarrassed and... and and had nothing really to say. She's like, no, it, it's it's fine. It's just, I feel like, and she was really, like, timid oh, and wild. Oh, yeah, that's you know, all. She was shooting yeah. her mouth off and then just stopped yeah, right away. Shit always happens. Mm, you know. Yeah. I have, like, one final, like, kind of story. So, when I was back in, whenever I was still Brazil D&T, there was a guy that joined the guild, and like he would comment on like YouTube videos sometime, and he eventually ended up applying and getting in. And we were all just kind of like talking about school one day, and we both started talking about schools, and like it came up that we both went to private schools, and he was like, "Yeah, I go to blah 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 school in Texas," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, have you ever heard of blah, blah, blah school? He's like, yeah, we play each other and like football and stuff. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like we, we literally live like 45 minutes away from huh. each other. And like we go out and get dinner like every month or so. That was just like really, really strange. It's so weird like, that in Texas there are two schools named blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> weird coincidence. Yeah. But that was that was just, that was really that was kind of like oh wow okay but that was that was interesting he's a pretty cool guy yeah. by the way guys uh, just to let you know I think I might be the reason why we have uh, the legendary weapons are indefinitely suspended oh no really? what did you do well at PAX East back in the day before the launch of HOT when we didn't have any information on them. I talked to Colin Johansson and I said, uh, we were having a conversation about it. I was like, well, I think, I mean, the first things you got to release are the ones that, uh, the, the ones where there's weapons that are just sort of silly and, and, and make, make more serious versions of those weapons. Uh, after that, I don't really care because it doesn't really matter as long as there's replacements for the ones that are silly that nobody really wants. Oh, they didn't finish, yeah. They didn't finish Mace. Yeah. The Mace yeah, is kind of cool, so. though. The the movie is pretty no. cool. What? No, 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 it's not. No, it's a party on a stick. Yeah, I need some. I need some. This is a look. This is a video game teapot. We need some seriousness up in here. We need to take it. So serious. In other words, we we are we're gonna now. Can Reddit have your head now, Boots? Can they just speaking of Reddit? Put, put I saw a great thread yeah. this morning. The the Harambe one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. So I didn't catch the Harambe one. So it. there, it was, there was a thread that was saying like the exalted bastions look a bit like Gorsival with their headpieces. Uh. The exalted sages look a bit like Zara with their little helmets. But has anyone noticed that the, the Orion gorillas look a bit like Harambe? <laughs> and what did it say? Oh wait, it's removed! No! <laughs> it got to leave. Random user! <laughs> Too funny. Wow. Random user strikes again, guys. It's destroyed. Yeah, it random user, uh, if you're watching this, you're a terrible moderator. I just want to let you know. <laughs> wow. And really bad at Mystic Builds. He, do, he does win, though. He does win all the time. Yeah. I think, um, um, I think it just... Do no, you know I don't think that just says something a little bit sad about the state of the Guild Wars 2 community? They would literally rather upvote kind of shit-talking the game, shit-talking PvP, and, you know, the esports thing, and shit-talking... Uh, uh, well, uh, witch hunting arena partners. partners. They would rather upvote all of that than dank memes. Dank memes. Meme. Dank yeah. memes okay, now that's, that's why you're not partnered yet. Can we uh, can we put a we need a Bible thump in chat, guys? Not only for Harambe, but also for dank memes on the the subreddit. I mean, yeah, damn, we got wrecked. Mm. We got wrecked. Memes have been lost this day. But you know, speaking of memes, we're going to the Ring of Fire now, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. On, hey, well, oh, hey, hey. Ain't not hype things? Not hype for Ring of Fire? I am I am excited for the Ring of Fire. I'm a, if it turns out to be Primordus. What do you mean if it turns out to be Primordus? Well, so the the NPC Of course it's like, Primordus. Well no, because your character says, Oh, it's Primordus. 
And the NPC is like, well, we don't know that for sure. Oh, well, come on. It could just be like, it could be the Great Destroyer or some kind of lieutenant. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's probably Primordus, let's be honest. But he's well, a fire I don't think, dragon, I don't think goes we're gonna to the meet fire Primordus. islands. You, I don't think we're going to meet Primordus in the living story. Are you sure? Uh, no, Are you sure? I don't know. No, we definitely I'm not don't. sure, but I don't think so. We definitely okay, will. Okay, we have to think about... Like, do you we think we'll to... defeat Primordus yeah, in the no. living story? No. Yeah. That'll be the expansion. No, no but the thing is, how, how many expansions are Guild Wars 2 going to make? We've got to get through all these dragons. Okay, and probably yeah, they are... Yeah, knocking them off. Yeah, but they're like not... They're, I mean, how... Well, expand, Guild Wars 1 got, what? Four, four? expansions. Four expansions. So let's assume that we're going to get four Guild Wars 2 expansions before Guild Wars 3. So that means we've still, got, <laughs> we, we've still got some dragons left over after that. So we need to right, get... Right, but I think, I think the story is going to go in a direction where we don't necessarily have to kill them anymore, but there'll be some other method for dealing with them. Yeah, so okay, fine. We have to deal with all these dragons mm. before the next expansion. Well, mm. by before the next expansion? Oh, no, 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 no. We have to deal with all the dragons before the next Guild Wars. Do you really think there's going to be a next Guild Wars? Oh, fine, whatever the next, you know, IP that Arena are going to make. Guild Wars I, I would just imagine that they would continue Guild Wars 2 for as long as they can. Yeah, well, I don't see why they wouldn't. I can promise you that none of the partners have seen anything about Episode 2. We don't even know anything about Episode 2. The media knows more than we do. Yeah. I mean, if we did, we'd be breaking NDA and insider trading already, but we haven't yet. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I like how you say it. we haven't yet about insider trading. Uh, yeah, it's funny. No, I can promise that none of us here know anything about Episode 2 yet. But uh, my question is, okay, so Primordis, you're saying that Primordis is going to show up in the living world. Okay, probably. Maybe. Uh, eh, well, yeah, we're at least going to get some hint of him. But I it's got to we'll be Primordis. It's not going to be... Confirmation. Because they went from up north, which apparently was like the chamber of Primordis before, right? Yeah, right. he's moving... Yeah, well, exactly. he, he was outside. The, he was right outside the central transfer chamber. Right. right. Yeah. So he's moving underground. So it's probably not just the Great Destroyer. That would be kind of. It's got to be primordial. Something big is moving underground, right? Yeah. Yeah. It could we be. We say primordial, and the NPC is like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. No spoilers. What does he say oh, I, I mean. It, it could be it could be like a lieutenant though. I mean, Tequatl is pretty big. You know, Claw of Jormag also pretty big. Yeah, I know the Great Destroyer is dead, but he has other two lieutenants. fat dragons, a little ley yeah. line magic. Yeah, together. <laughs> <laughs> now they could fight each other. We could turn the dragons on each other. We can make I the fire. Dra we can make the fire dragon melt the ice dragon. How about that? I that think works. ultimately we're gonna have Earth's to deal ice. with Lazarus. Like, working with Lazarus and the White Mantle to a degree, and maybe even the Inquest to deal with the next dragon. Why the Inquest? Because they worked with the White Mantle. Oh, yeah? Even though the White Mantle, like, hated that they had to work with inferior little rats. That's basically what they said. And so I think Lazarus is going to end up being someone we necessarily have to team up with, and then we have to take him because, oh, what a surprise, he was evil all along. I think you might be... Well, I mean, yeah. I think we might no, have to team I, up with Lazarus there, there's because... There's no questioning it. That's what's going to happen. Because isn't I, there oh. a Mersat fortress in... Uh, yes, the yeah. Onyx. Exactly. So possibly Lazarus wants us to help him defeat Primordis to take over his old fortress. Maybe. Because that's where, well, like, the Titans are and whatever. Th there's, there's not really yeah. a lot to gain f for Lazarus doing that because the whole point of that was to kind of prevent the flame seeker prophecy is happening and that happened and then now you know he's the last one or there's a few others i don't know but i i mean i imagine he's going there because there's resources there yeah, yeah. he's going from this... the previous fortress that he yeah. wants yeah it's, it's, he, he watched a lot of the way we were and he's he's nostalgic about the, the old way days. We were. <laughs> so he wants to go back and Cordicus follows him and 
Canuck follows Cardicus, and we follow Canuck, so that's how we all get there. Yes. And we're going there anyway because Tommy come, calls us up on a seraphone, and she says, hey, you need to get to the Fire Island chain. It's fine. Prime Wars is probably there. There was there was something interesting. <laughs> there was something interesting. Uh, the MMO Hut article mentioned another dragon coming into the mix, and I don't know if that was just his speculation or whether something was said in those PAX interviews, because he the line he said was something like, "I would put money on the fact that we're going to see another dragon come into the mix." Well, he probably heard something then because. I don't know. I haven't really seen much speculation in in like MMO news articles. Yeah, he he wrote for MMO Hut and then he wrote for another site as well and that quote was there like twice. And it wasn't in any of the other articles or uh, any of the other videos or whatever that I had seen about it, but he mentions that in like the end of the first or second paragraph. Um kind of telling the story and ramping it up and saying and how could we make this even worse? Well, I would put money on another dragon coming. Into the well, game. maybe he's just talking about Primordus. <laughs> no, he he talks about Primordus and Lazarus and all that oh. previously. So, I mean, does this mean Krakatoric? Does this mean Jormag? We know that Ram is north with the Svanir, and they have increased activity as well. Maybe Steve, because I don't see Jormag Steve. coming down to. Uh, I don't see Jormag coming down to the Fire Island chain. He's pretty icy and probably doesn't want to get melted. Well, I mean, this doesn't mean that they necessarily have to come to the Fire Islands, just that they're moving and active as well, right? Yeah, but I'm thinking like, I'm thinking that, um, yeah, he probably doesn't want to come all the way down there. But uh, Kralgatorik, I think, is probably going to get saved for uh, uh, the next expansion because it's probably going to be in, uh, what's it called, Alona and all that. And Steve, I mean, Steve is free to do whatever he wants. Be revealed at any time, right? Yeah. He can intercept and, us on the way to the Ring of Fire island chain. Yeah. I and imagine we're going to take like, an airship. I don't think we're going to sail there, do you think? Well. Mm, uh, oh, I don't know. I think we might the, just. Yeah. The, how yeah, many airships do we have? Wow. Well, uh, when you said <laughs> sail there, I, was, I actually thought for like a minute. I had like flashbacks of Game of Thrones, and I was like, "Well, Daenerys has an army of ships, so maybe we could." And then I realized that those are two completely different things, <laughs> and that well, that's the, not going to happen. The Aerodrome has all kinds of airships and yeah, it does. built and stuff like that. So I imagine that people oh. seem to have this underwater seem to raid. Think that there's very few airships for some reason. I, I think there's quite a few of them. There's going to be an underwater raid on the way to the Ring of Fire. That'd that be will good. be fun. Oh, that will be good. It's the Capricorn. Oh my god. <laughs> spear. <laughs> Warrior Spear. I think yeah. Warrior Spear would stack might, wouldn't it? PS4 Warrior Spear? It's only when you get a crit with a great sword. Great sword. But what if they change that? <laughs> so it with a spear as well? Phalanx yeah. Strength Spear Warrior. Exactly. The Warrior Spear is pretty good. Yeah, it is. It will be fun. Necromancer doesn't have anything good underwater. It's all terrible. The meta, the meta is changing at an alarming underwater rate. Look, look at the oh, wow, but the the auto attack on Death Shroud Brazil. Every single one transfers a condition. That's value. The base Necromancer auto attack in Death Shroud underwater is busted. People would be pissed if it's, we got an underwater race. It's <laughs> literally like three times as fast as regular, like just regular death shroud on land. So it's like you hit a 10k three times a second. It's it's nuts. That's so it's awesome. probably better DPS than Necromancer does on. <laughs> I'm I'm excited now for the videos, the the underwater meta that's going to develop yeah. and come out. You can just show the bugs where you fight all the raid bosses underwater. How about that? You know. There you go. And you get, that's yeah. where the Necromancer really shines, with its underwater combat. <laughs> yeah. All right, it could be, yeah, there are multiple dragons it could be. But I think it could be more of like a battle on two fronts, with, as you say, with, you know, Bram up north doing his thing, rolling around in snow or whatever he's doing. Or they make us make a decision. Do you want to fight? Do you have to... Oh. I mean, not an actual decision in the game, but... Uh, because that doesn't really exist. So they could give us another poll. Yeah, exactly. Fight. 
That would be really yeah. interesting, actually. If there was a an actual decision where we take... If you take choose Primordius, yeah. you get 20% of Black Lion keys. If you choose your <laughs> mag, you save 10% of waypoint costs. <laughs> Are they going to keep with the thing that says that destroyers cannot take burning damage? Or are they going to change that? I would I would imagine. Why wouldn't they keep that? Wait, is that how it works in the game currently? Yeah, destroyers are immune to uh, burning. Yeah, so why not? Well, bye bye, Guardian. You're yeah. bad enough. <laughs> kind of looks no, I just it's going to be mean, you know annoying for a lot of uh, elementalists too, doing all the damage with fire. Won't be annoying for Necromancer. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be okay. Sigil of Era makes a pretty big difference on Power Necro, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was like a 2k difference in DPS. So well, why don't you uh, run the Snowfall, the Mischief Sigil instead? This so Sigil's good too. Yeah. It's just more actions, and I don't like more actions. How do you, wait, 2k DPS on Sigil? Oh, it's because you, but it doesn't even crit, so you don't get Ferocity off it. No. How does but it do I'm pretty sure it, it steals health, and it scales off power. And the sharpening stones have more power. Plus Fair seaweed enough. salad and whatever, if that affects it, I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> it may not, whatever. But Mass damage modifiers. It's a big difference. I was looking at that last night, because I was only getting 25k with Sigil of Accuracy, and my perfect, perfectly optimized exactly 50%. And it was like 2k less than using not perfectly optimized with stupid sigil of air. Hmm. It's made me pretty mad. Oh. Well, that's good as long as you're not cleaving. Then your sigil's gonna get wasted. And that's not good. You don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. No. Your sigil of fire. So you, well, just, you, don't you need just need you just need two sets. That's what you need. Just have two sets. One with a one with an accuracy, and one with a, with an air. You can just swap it up at well. You know, you can just swap it up. No, no. <laughs> you know, I could you, do that, but no. You need to have every possible setup for every situation in the game because there is, have there is no best Brazil. There is sports. only best at. Best that. Yeah, there's only <laughs> best at. That's yeah. right. <clears throat> but, wait, why do you have five ascended great swords? I have two on warrior. I have one on guardian. I have one on my Necromancer, and I have one on my Mesmer. Sounds okay. like you have too many classes. Hey, shut up, Inks. You should delete some of your characters, like Inks. Yeah, you should. You should. Yep. And then not be able to yep. get them back. And then, yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be fair. The only reason I want them back is because dies, which I don't actually need anymore, so it's fine. You're over it already. I, I might need them next year. We'll see. Speaking of dyes, if we're going back to Guild Wars 1 places, do you think we'll be able to dye weapons? No. No, <laughs> no because there's too many Never. weapons that are just different colors right now. <clears throat> yeah. Not only that, but it defeats the whole purpose of the ascended uh, weapon color thingy. You'll never yeah. be able to dye weapons. Because the different... Ascended weapon color The different, different stats on ascended weapons have different colors. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Berserker is <laughs> red. And Celestial is kind Violets of weird rainbow. Not only Bombay's that, but I, th I could... an Orion gorilla, and so are you. <laughs> there's a number of, uh... I think there's a number of legendary weapons with the effects and stuff, which would probably cause some problems. Oh, we can die effects now. They've demonstrated that. We had the, like, lunatic guard outfit, where you can change the fire. And you mm. have that glider, Tron. You can change the smoke that comes out of it. That's true. Definitely doable. So they have the tech for that now. Yeah. They have the technology. No, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. They're not going to add no. capes either. They're never going to add capes to the nope, game. No, they won't. Because, really? yeah. Why? I mean, look at the cloth physics in the game right now. It... So? It doesn't have to be that great. It would be, It would. yeah, but it would be a lot of yeah, work but... to make it function correctly, especially with char and stuff. You'd have to, like, replace all of the skeletons. Yeah. Like, do you know how difficult it is to add, like, physics to body parts and stuff in Skyrim? Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot. And, I don't know, the people that do it are a little bit more sick than the people at Anet, I think, too. Well, not only that, but <clears throat> we know that when ArenaNet does stuff like that, they want to 
Jeez, I'm losing my voice. They want to do it right. Stop talking. <laughs> I know. They they want to do it right, so yeah. they're not going to just you know say, oh, it's fine that it doesn't work on Chara, but it works for everybody else. And I know that that sucks because Char kind of are the big drive on why that's messed up, but... Caves would be cool, though. I do like caves. Yeah, it would be cool. Guild Wars 1 caves are pretty good. But, you know, in Guild Wars 1, the, cl the caves would just clip through you all the time, anyway. No one was really bothered by that, so... <laughs> that's true. Well, that's what those guild banners were supposed to be, right? They were supposed to be caves, but it eliminated the possibility of clipping because they were, like, jutting out of yeah. your back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that looked goofy, so nobody used those. Delete char. I mean, the the cape would probably just clip right through their midsection. I think a lot of the back items kind of suck, honestly. In this game, I don't really like any of them. The fractal one's pretty cool, not the legendary. No, it's not. It's the legend, the fractal capacitor is kind of pretty cool. It's bad. You think it's bad? Yep. Oh, okay, it's bad. Uh, but I don't know. I don't. I just don't like wings, guys. What can I say? I don't like wings. There's. Um, I'm yeah. currently working on getting the PvP back piece, right. and as soon as I do, I'm just transmuting Zara's face over it. Okay. Okay. It's it's just going to be like there's not even a point for me to get it other than the stat selection. It'll be worthless because I hate the skin. I, guess, yeah, I, actually, I actually like it, but I like uh, I like the effects and all that kind of crap on it. So. Yeah, the effects are actually pretty cool, but... Just Depending the way your wings race, look in this game, odd, it's just... But... I don't know. Yeah, I just My favorite like wings are the first wings you ever get in the game. The holographic shattered dragon wings. Mm. I don't like those. Okay. Well, but I do. I think the molten jetpack and Zera's backpack are pretty good. Molten jetpack? I think I, I really like the molten jetpack, the idea of it. Uh, if they actually turn that into a glider, a glider that'd, be amazing. that'd be really good. Uh, the only problem is, like, I would have only wanted it for my Asura, and it looks gigantic on him. It looks yeah. way too big. Not only that, but all backpacks on Asura are too low on their back. They almost they almost start at their waist, like yeah. above waist. And if you look closely, they're all like a lot of them are like a good three inches off of their back and not actually attached. Oh, in certain, uh, armors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. It, that would be, I mean, I, I can accept that as long as they just move the back piece up a little bit on the back. They sit too low. The best example of this is if you look at the uh, SAB back pieces, they, they're like fanny packs, basically, for the Asura. That's a good point. You know, the legendary backpack, it's no good because of the power and condition infusions. So even if you have the legendary backpack, you can't switch the infusion without paying some money to do it. It's not oh, they're the probably... extractors? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like when they actually come out uh, with the legendary armor, they're going to come out with a, a solution to that kind of thing for other legendary equipment. I so wait, to... what's, what's the problem? That you can't... The infusion. You can't take the infusion If you want to be a, a true elitist, right. and you want to swap the stats, say if you want to swap from power to condi, you'd still oh, yeah. have the... If you switched from power to condi, you'd still have the plus five... Power infusion, rendering you can't, swapping because worthless. You can't, you can't extract it. Well, I mean, you you can, but you have to pay. Pay up. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that's kind of irrelevant because who? I don't know who who really uses it to st swap stats anyway. I don't use my legendary to swap stats on. Yeah. It, it, because you you have a well with weapons anyway. You have the sigil on it, and with armor you'll have the runes. And with the back pieces, you have infusions. So well, no with legendary weapons, I often... Well, I mean, I guess maybe I'm a special case because I test out a lot of different builds, but I often use them to sw swap around stats and see what works. Um, sigils aren't that big of a deal. Back piece, maybe not so much, because 90% of the time, I don't even use the proper back piece if it's not legendary for whatever build I'm doing, because it's like 20 stats, so it doesn't really matter. But... Uh, but yeah, I, I, if I ever got Legendary Armor, I would definitely use it for the stat switching. That would be the only reason for me to get Legendary Armor. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, that's not why. But uh, unfortunately, the current systems in the game don't support stat switching very well. Mm. Unless you want to pay for, like you said, unless you want to pay for um, switching your sigils and stuff out. 
Yeah. What the hell was that? That was uh, a <laughs> random noise. <laughs> okay. There's a new PvP map as well. That's kind of yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's gonna mm. be Ring of Fire based. Well, no, it's Colosseum. Yeah. It's like Roman Colosseum yeah. based. That's kind of conquest. Cool. But what is it? So yeah, well, well, yeah, they're not gonna they're gonna make a new stronghold map. Come on, <laughs> come on. I can I can hope I can hope. I, I'm I'm Maybe pretty sure would... we have we have pretty good evidence that there were, there were less than ten people queuing for for stronghold. Well, Maybe that actually. would revitalize the uh, no the game mode. No, it wouldn't <laughs> make a new map. <laughs> no, they need an overhaul to stronghold. Unfortunately, like a complete overhaul. Oh, do they though? Hold well, on. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Could you hear me before? I don't no. think so. Will you speak? Okay, my microphone was muted somehow. I don't oh. know how that happened. Okay. But did you see Grouch's response to my stronghold tweet? Yes. I did not. I stronghold tweeted him is not I tweeted popular. him a picture of a stronghold queue that was an hour long. And right. he said stronghold's not popular and ranked, sorry. Woof. Then why did you make it? Hi! Hello! What's up, Grouch? <laughs> I think, uh, I think that's a problem. Um... It, it, well, if, it, if it takes an hour to queue, just delete it. Just well, delete it! Because they thought no. they, they thought it would be popular. Mm. And I kind of thought it would be popular. I think it's a cool game mode. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the solution is to delete it. I mean, that'll cause it. It's funny because hardly anybody plays it. But if you deleted it, the outrage would be pretty hilarious. Because no, I don't think it would. No, the I don't think people were would happy shit. when they deleted the desert borderlands. No, that was and now a they're happy. That huge it's feature of the expansion, and everyone hated it, and they deleted it, and people they were. They didn't like the fact that it completely replaced the alpine borderlands, and that there was no because they liked the alpine borderlands. So why take it completely out just for the desert borderlands, which had problems? So they fixed the problems, took it out for a while, and now it's back with the Alpine Borderlands together. And people are very happy about that. I don't think that's, there's going to be a similar solution with Stronghold, though. I don't see how they, they're not, they're not going to put it into a rotation for, for ranked for, uh, like, force it onto people. That would be, impossible. I would actually like them to do that just to, just to be just bathed in the salt, just be amused. It will look okay. I'm gonna say this, guys. I would not. I would never endorse. It. I think that would be one of the worst ideas ever to have a rotation of PvP maps between Stronghold yeah. and Conquest. But it will be really fucking funny. Seriously, I, I would. My God, it would be the best change of my life for that reason. People will be <laughs> so unhappy that they had them forced to play Stronghold. Oh my! I get to Legend so fast, man. It will be unbelievable. <laughs> Because there'll be all these people going, oh, this game mode's a piece of shit, and just refusing to learn the strategies, and we and we just bully them, and then they'd lose. Yeah. That'd be good. But what, hap what would happen, though, if you were forced to do Conquest at the same time? Well, I, actually, I, know I wouldn't really be bothered. If they remove Stronghold, I'd go, oh, well, that kind of sucks, and i just not play PvP. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, Conquest... Especially this season. I don't know, my solo queue is just fucking ridiculous. It's like, oh, you know, oh, there's, oh, here's a druid, he's, he's having fun, he's rushing far every game, he respawns yeah. and he rushes far again, you know, this, this is fine. You know, oh, you know, oh, ooh, we've got I, fucking, I've... I've got three thieves on my team, and none of them are switching, oh, great, it's, oh, fuck off. Unbelievable. We, we queued the other day and we had people that just left the match, people that just AFK'd, druids that just went far immediately and lost and then just went again and lost. And like I I was I, I've been solo queuing and stuff, and like you get into two V twos with people. This happened the other day. I was in a two V two with a guy, and like he just disconnected from the match and we had both the other people down. They both rallied off his disconnect and they killed me. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is fun. Like, I, I was on, like, a eight or nine game losing streak. And it's just like, all right. Like, I'm never going to get any further into the league. Like, I'm I, I'm not that concerned with, like, progressing. I just want to get better at Thief. But it's just kind of really difficult when just stupid stuff happens. Yeah. And it just makes it really not fun. So, well, I don't know. If you just I have people that actually just throw the games... My my favorite is the the unranked trolls. Oh, so people 
people oh, are damn it. <laughs> people are trying to do uh, the the revenge the, on the Capricorn. Yeah, and they always yeah, and they just vote for another and map. Oh. You'll see like you know X number of people vote for a Capricorn, and then there's like one vote for like there's one vote for each of the separate maps, so it could be chosen. And then when that map when Capricorn doesn't get chosen. Everybody just AFKs and waits for the timer to run out, basically, because nope, they refuse to play. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this is ridiculous. Why did you choose the free? You chose it just to troll, and then you don't want to play the map. <laughs> oh, too funny. Uh, I, 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 I don't wonder. know. I, I think Conquest is actually pretty good. I think it, it, the way, the reason Conquest is good is because it's kind of balanced and it works in a solo queue setting, in theory. Whereas Stronghold really doesn't work in in solo queue at all, and and this is kind of this is actually the biggest problem with Stronghold. I mean, the the game kind of doesn't work unless you have coordination and you're, you're organized. Otherwise, you're you're basically fucked. Uh, whereas in in Conquest, you know, there's there's individual responsibility can can win games as opposed to just a big you know team organizing, just running around squishing people. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and I've seen this, I've seen this suggested a million times. Do you think that the PvP scene would be more popular if they went to an arena-style game rather than conquest? They tried that with Courtyard, didn't they? Well, no, Courtyard no. was never a serious thing. I'm talking about, you know, and you're only able to do Courtyard, like by yourself. Like it was a. Um... You had to set it up your own server, basically. I'm talking about three v three matches. I guess three v three or what? Five v five seems like way too much. Yeah, Brazil, you're right. They changed that after people weren't happy that it was in. Uh, it was game. yeah, it was an yeah. unranked or whatever. Yeah. I mean, do you think that would really be popular for? That's uh, what the Coliseum uh, is, well? isn't it? I don't. No, no it's, it's a conquest. No. It's a conquest map. I oh. know. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to add any more game modes, actually, until the scene is bigger, and then you can add more game modes. I think it, I, I don't know. I just don't think. Otherwise, you're just going to divide the community, and I, I don't think dividing the community is, is a smart, is a smart plan. I don't know. One v one, two v two, three v three. I mean, I would never ever play those modes, but a lot of people seem to really want that for whatever the reason is, because it's fun, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know. Um, but I see I see that comment a lot whenever we talk about PvP or when whenever anybody talks about PvP that they want, but you know two v two you know the arena style kind of gameplay. I'm just wondering yeah. if that would be more fun for people to watch on Twitch and stuff. If that would actually help their numbers over com over something like Conquest. Yeah. The problem with two v two and three v three, although they could be fun, can't be easily inserted into the same game that other people are playing because uh, you can't bring a five-man team into it, right? So it would have to be divided from the normal Conquest people. Um, it's a shame. I think 2v2 and 3v3 uh, is... I mean, it is fun. So I think it, it, it could be given a chance. Um, it would need good maps for it. I don't know if Courtyard is really the best map for it. Courtyard is a horrible map. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably th the worst map they've ever made. I, mm. I would rather have 1v1s in South Sun Cove. <laughs> you have to balance each mode and split the player base. I mean, you can't afford to split the player base in PvP. Player base is not very big. Yeah. So if that's the case, if it's going to really do, you know, split the player base big, then... They can't afford to. Mm. I th to a certain extent, that's kind of what they tried to to suck people more in with Stronghold, right? Because they oh, yeah, maybe the sure. world versus world players kind of thought, oh, look, this, you know, you got you got gates, guys, you got gates in this game mode, you've got gates in <laughs> world versus world, gates in Stronghold. Let's bolster up the PvP. And obviously, they wanted to have a new idea, and I think Stronghold is kind of a new idea. Um, I, I think there is you know, something a little bit different about that game mode, and that's cool. The idea didn't, didn't really work out, but come on, me and Inks, me and Inks are a big, you know, with endorsers of Stronghold. It's all about that Stronghold gameplay. But hey, you know, whatever. People like Conquest. I know people in Salt who like Conquest. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I, I understand I'm in the minority. I'm, I'm not, you know, role playing as a special snowflake or anything. You know, I, they can play their game mode and I can not play it. Uh, I, well, I don't know. 
I, I, I think I'm not really that much in the in the uh, minority there because I, I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people they play until they get legend and then they just stop because they you know they want Why the would you continue <laughs> because it's fun they want to f fun inks fun no players aren't interested in prestige fun. They're, interested in, they're interested in rewards and whatever else they can get out of it they're not interested in fun. If but, legend, if the legend tier uh, was a better farming experience, would people do with it more? They don't want if it to the, be that. If though. the entire, if the entire system meant something as far as your actual skill, then it would mean something. But mm. it doesn't, so people don't really care. Okay. No. So getting getting to legend just doesn't mean nearly enough. Right. Yeah. So the desert borderland map is now only for the red team as the uh, as the defender uh, do you think that they're setting that up to make a new another world versus world borderline map I would expect that something and, they're looking to do down the line yeah yeah probably yeah. that's kind of cool don't you think one on each map yeah, Al um, Alpine could be the blue team I think it's Ten cool balance wise I don't know Mm. I guess it depends what the new map is like. It's, it's always the it's, it's always the trouble, isn't it? Because there, if it, as with literally anything, there are going to be some inherently favorable situations right. on each like, of the like maps as a result of design and choices. Are not equal maps, so yeah, no. of course. Yeah, it would suck. It would suck if like eventually down the line, people are like, "Well, desert borderlands are inherently terrible to be the defender on." Uh, I think I'm going to since we're read this. This week, I'm just not going to play a World vs. World. Well, I think that can be solved when you have kind of, uh, well, either a tournament or at least some kind of season system, whereas each each team is on each map the same amount of times, because then it's even, right? Didn't I see in Reddit, on Reddit, somebody and that's how posted it would be, obviously. informal discussion with a dev, I think, just like... Uh, it was with a game, it was. it was with a game master or something, not an actual With a dev, GM, oh, okay, so not yeah. a dev. Okay, but they but were saying yeah. something about seasons wouldn't be coming back for a while. Right. Well, I mean, if they have, they still have a. Even though we've seen some progress in World vs. World, there's still a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice that World vs. World is seeing development outside of these living story patches. So, in other words, like the ninth, just the other day, we've seen an update to the skirmishes, and then that'll go for a little while. And then they have another scoring system to add in there, and then uh, there'll be another poll to see what the next direction. So until a lot of that stuff gets ironed out, which is probably going to take quite a while just yet, uh, we're not going to see the return of seasons and stuff like that. You know, Maybe when they get more of that stuff figured out, but my guess would be six months to a year, and six months is probably generous. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They got a lot on their plate right now, though, with all the things. I mean, the good news is that changes are actually happening to World vs. World. It's yeah, and they're testing out the new system. The uh, it's a shame it took this long for a lot of these changes to happen, but at least there's movement. You know, maybe not all of it is exactly what that player base wants, but at least they're getting a say now. They're they're getting some feedback from ArenaNet, or ArenaNet's getting feedback from them rather. So I, you know, that's a positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah. Uh, I guess that's not exactly the highest priority right now. Especially... No, I don't know. I, I think it's expansion number two. Well, that and making sure that Living Story goes off without a hitch, I would expect. Yep. Two months mm -hmm. between patches. Yeah. And obviously they want to get their PvP stuff sorted out because... As you can see, I, I, their plan is pretty obvious here. So, before, they can't have proper series, right? Because they don't have enough competitive maps, yeah? So now, if they can uh, get Capricorn or, uh, say, you know, Spirit Watch, or maybe even Skyhammer, you know? If they can get any of these matches at, maps and the new one as well, they can have proper, you know, you know best of sevens for, for mm, right. you know, finals or something like that. And that, in, 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 yeah, in my opinion, I think that's really good. Uh, because I think to kind of have a final on a best of three or a best of five, it's kind of, eh, it's pretty meh, especially when uh, sometimes it will be on the same map twice in, in a series, right? That's, I, I don't know, I think that's not that great. Uh, and being mm. able to have a different map on every game, 
I think is a really, really good thing, actually. Yeah, yeah you fucking, you guys don't like Skyhammer, but you know, they, they tried to fix it. You have to give them credit for that, right? They're Skyhammer to... is really mm. small, and Capricorn is really big. Yeah. But that, that's because they're trying I, I they're really, trying stuff out, aren't they? They're trying to different things really like how the way the game works. I haven't I, been really looking at the feedback too much on what, you know, uh, the more dedicated PvPers are saying about Capricorn, but I've, I've been enjoying the map a lot, actually. I like the environment. I just it's just big and open. I'm not like a I don't know, I'm not really a huge fan. The environment looks great, like the I don't know, models and stuff, textures or whatever. Mm. I'm a fan of that, the architecture, I guess what you would call it, but I don't know. I think the I bell's a good mechanic as well actually. I think it's a good map mechanic. I think it, it 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 rewards people who are good at conquest and punishes people who are bad at conquest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, because if you overcommit, you're gonna lose caps. But if you undercommit, you can you can lose control of the game. If you don't if you don't have some people delaying on it, so you can hold on to your caps. The first time you lose it, it doesn't. It's not really a big deal, right? But if you lose it another time, or maybe even a third time, you're just gonna get screwed if you just overcommit to your points. I think it's a good it's a good conquest mechanic. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I think so too. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say though, alright, so you're, you're, Brazil, you mentioned two months between releases. Yep. Um, do you think, considering what we got and considering what we're getting next, do you think that's too long or well, is it okay? We don't really know what we're getting next other than we're going to Fire Island Chains. We don't know Which, how big that it's true. zone it's, is. That's true, or... but like the promise of it is pretty pretty big for me, I feel. I think waiting a year from Oh, no, Heart no, no. Thorns, I, yeah, I agree with you. Like no, the 10-month no, 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 no. span was like... A year between Heart of Thorns, yeah. the first patch. It's too much. Well, it wasn't a year. Yeah, it was basically a year. Didn't Heart of Thorns come out in... It's 10 oh. months. Yeah, months, yeah, it was basically a year. Yeah, so that was way too long. Yes, and then we got one map, and people were like, oh, cool, and they farmed it, and they got bored of it. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's kind of just, I don't know, it's kind of just boring. And yeah. I've actually just been PvPing because other than raids, there's just nothing to do. Like, I, there's nothing I enjoy in the game. And, like, whenever the next patch comes out, I suspect it's going to be, like, Oh, cool. A story that takes an hour, and then a map that you farm for a little bit, and then it's two months. Okay. So for you, you chew through content pretty fast. Yes. Uh, that's that's uh, that's definitely something worth mentioning. I just get stuff done immediately. Like, yeah. I'll just do it and finish it as fast as I possibly can. Right. So that's, I, I'm not everybody. Yeah, for me, I'm not even close to finishing everything from the last release. I agree with you that obviously the ten months was kind of crazy, but I think we we all kind of understand now that it's because they messed up with Heart of Thorns and didn't have anything down the pipe and had to kind of re-initialize their schedule entirely. Um, but if if the the case is that every two months we're going to get something like what we got last time and Stuff like like a whole new map, Ring of Fire, maybe a whole new map every single release of uh, of the Living World. Uh, how, would you be? If, we'll well, for me, for me, I, I feel it's pretty good, but I don't choose con through content quite as quickly as you do. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not disappointed so far. Um, the first, the, so the living, the first Living Story patch was too short. Uh, not just because of story-wise. Story is always going to feel short. It's always going to be short. Yeah. Uh, you just can't. There's there's not going to be a length of story where I think people are going to be overly satisfied with how long it takes you to complete. <clears throat> and that varies from person to person. And as you repeat those, it just kind of becomes more annoying than anything else. But the the little map that we got, which was nice to get a map, don't get me wrong, but... You know, players wait nine to ten months. Yes, you get a little map. Yes, you get a little story. It's not enough content to really last two to three months. Most of the time, it won't be. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news is we're coming up on the later part of the year. So with whatever this new patch brings, which sounds bigger than the previous one, which is good, 
Uh, we also have Halloween next month, and then we're going to be rolling into December a little while and Winter's Day, so those festivals and stuff will return for those who like that stuff as well. I love Halloween. <clears throat> it's a good. It's good. Halloween is my favorite sport. Holiday. <laughs> holiday. Sp- sport Same holiday. Thing. Yeah. Um, mm, I don't know. I, I I was kind of quite a little bit satisfied with how the uh, the, the living story patch was. You got another set of dailies, something to do every day. You know, just a little bit of your time. I just um, stopped. I don't care. The map I'm is tired. obviously designed to be farmed, and that's kind of a good thing. Uh, because I think it has occupied a lot of people, and especially knowing that what you do in this map will assist you in the next map as well, because you'll be using Unbound Magic. Uh, that yeah, will right. be useful in the next one. I think that's really good. Uh, and, uh, and just the, the quality and the size of the map, I think, is pretty solid. I mean, if you, if you, if you took its layers and spread it out like an onion, you would, um, you'd, you'd have a good amount of map, actually, on this map. And I, I think we can like, expect... Like a burrito. I think we can expect something similar in scale for the next patch as well yeah i what i'm looking hopefully forward to with the next patch with uh ring of fire is that it's not another map set up just to farm that it has a little more substance to it in like exploration and um maybe lore maybe activities i the fact that the heart quests are coming back that's something Mm, i like but i'm not i'm not quite it's not really like if it's a repeatable heart quest that's farming it's farming again, and I yeah. don't see how it's that much different than a uh, dynamic just, event. Just a men- exactly a dynamic event. Yeah. So, so we'll have to see. And well, how it, many well it are. might be good. It might be good for repeatable hard quests. Might be good for players with limited time. Yeah, it's gonna be like a you can just log in and do this, and then the right. script pirate queen thing is gonna be the big dynamic event. Mm-hmm. The good thing about it, I guess, is that. Two bosses. It'll like, yeah, it, it'll probably reduce the two bosses, a little loot, <laughs> a jumping puzzle <laughs> together. Reduce the reason for people to map hop, I guess. If it's not dynamic events that are uh, driving Maybe. the mm. loot. Yeah, I, th- I think that's definitely a problem they should solve because it is a bit of a pain in the ass having to, you know, constantly jump maps. And also, they probably. Maybe they didn't expect this, but then again, maybe they did. How abusive you can be with the Jade, where you can just bounce pretty much constantly between maps and just farm Blood Rubies really, really fast. And, and also, you get mm. good money for doing that as well. Um, I'm pretty terrible at that, but I know that you're good at it. Yeah? I, yeah. I, I, I like, watch you stream and just bounce between map and map and map. I usually get like two in a row, and by the time I get to the third one, it's fizzled out and dead. I could probably farm over 100 Blood Rubies a day with very little effort. Ah, yeah, you should tell us about that. You, you found oh, yeah. a fun feature, yes. haven't you? There is a mining pick that you can buy for laurels. It's two laurels. And with basically just that pick, I'll get, instead of like five-ish blood rubies from mining a day, from going through like two maps with two characters or whatever, I'll get like 25. And it's if good. I had on, like, if I had the max possible buffs, like the guild boosts and all of that stuff, the gathering booster, and that pick, like, I mean, I I get sometimes three blood rubies per node with, like, just the pick. Do you think those things would help a lot for, like, Maguma, Lilies, and... They uh... probably would. I they, they probably would. I'm I'm pretty confident that I could probably get over 40 blood rubies just from mining if I actually try. I may just do that. I may just make a video about it, honestly. Yeah, why not? It's pretty busted. Is it busted or is it working as intended? Well, both. <laughs> is it, I don't know. It's just like the salvage kits. Not all salvage kits are born equal, are they? Yeah. Um, right. And even the ones that are supposed to be the same, they're actually not, are they? Um, Didn't there used to be Black Lion uh, gathering tools? Yeah, but they only had like 25 charges. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, know if they still exist. Uh, it'd be interesting if you could still buy them and test them out. How many laurels is it for two, two of those? It two has for 250. 250 charges. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you need blood rubies, it's definitely worth it. No, I like laurels though. I don't like to spend laurels really until and you know you never know what you might need. Okay, with laurels. Yeah, the laurels. I mean, there you go, Mark. Uh, we can do insider trading right now. Uh, buy up all your laurels. 
to spend on these. Yeah, on the mining picks. Yeah, but it, it's yeah. okay. It's it, it doesn't matter it, because it's only account bound currencies that you get out of this. Can't trade. You can't inside it trade blood rubies, guys. Okay. Mm. I guess you can turn them into materials. So it, it's a bit like insider trading. Not really. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. What do you guys think about there? There was a post on Reddit um, about the fact about that the Harambe and Rizzo yeah. gorillas. Yeah, no, um, insider trading, yeah. <laughs> um, about the fact that you can't access Bloodstone Fen unless you have the story unlocked. Although you can teleport to friends, some people confirm that actually works to get into the map. But on the 20th, if you hadn't logged in already, which by the way, if you're watching this, and it's not the 20th yet, you should really just log in at least. You don't have to play or anything, but you should log in to unlock the episode. But if you don't unlock the episode, or if people come to, let's say they come in in episode 3, they just start playing the game, and they don't have episode 1 unlocked, you can't access Bloodstone Fen. That's how the system works. You gotta oh, well. deal with it. Should've logged in. Yeah, should've logged in. Was it really that hard to log in just once? Can't you... To get your content? You, you can always purchase with gems, right? The, uh, mm. the old episodes? I don't so that, think it's that much. That, that's sort of the complaint that you're gonna have to buy this episode now. People don't seem to understand for whatever reason that the Living Story 3 is not tied into the Heart of Thorns expansion. It's a separate thing, and if you miss it, you're gonna have to pay for it. Um, I will. I will say that they should have given you Living Story Two with Heart of Thorns instead of making you pay extra for that. That's yep. a bit that could have been a good bonus to have. Yeah, but... like a character slot. Am I right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> or two. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you should. In my opinion, you should get the whole story up until the whatever expansion you're buying. So they should have given you Living Story Two with Heart of Thorns, and with the next expansion, they should give you Living Story Three. But yeah, some people are not too happy with the fact that they're going to have to pay for it if for whatever reason they miss. I mean, you have two months to log in, two to three months to log in, <laughs> yeah. which, is even, which is way longer than you had in Living Story Season 2. But yeah, they're yeah. not... ArenaNet is specifically that. making it two to three months between expansions, uh, between Living Story releases, just so that you don't have to pay for them. Just so that you have that extra time. Right? To make sure you can log in. Exactly. The, new, yeah. the new player experience uh, is not good. I think they deleted that. What? No, it's there. It's just not very good. Well, they, they don't really uh, talk a, a, about long, that. a long time ago when they when they redid the new player experience and they changed a whole bunch of things, especially in the starting zones. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, but what what's wrong with it though? Yeah. My friend um, just got the game and got to 80 recently, and he really enjoyed the, the whole experience. So they, they gate off a number of things that don't necessarily need to be gated off, and there's not a good transition between the uh, simplistic heart quest that you do at the beginning, which they, they simplified for the new player experience, but then it doesn't teach you later on uh, how those heart quests sort of evolve. There, there's no stepping stone, it's just... It used to be that you picked up bundles and used bundles, and it doesn't, like, they didn't really smooth that process out at all. So they just took that process away at early levels, and then later levels, when they introduce it, there's no, there's no gradual introduction at all. So that didn't actually improve any of that. Hmm. <clears throat> On top of that, there's a number of things that are just simply locked off that... I just don't really get, you know, there's, uh, for example, there's hero points that you encounter fairly early on in the map, but then you can't actually interact or do anything with those hero points. You've got to backtrack later to actually get them when you're of the appropriate level. And especially in the first zone, that's a, a bit of an issue because you won't be the appropriate level for a little while. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So there's, I don't know, there's a couple of things with the new player experience that, and I'd have to really look into all the finer details of that. I mean, I haven't leveled a character properly in literal years in Guild Wars 2, but, yeah. I, th I think uh, people, you know, they can see what level you're supposed to be, though, in the zone, so they'll kind of hang around until they get to the appropriate level to move on, though, right? 
They should, yeah, but that it just it's just a weird backtracking thing that you're not allowed to you're not able to access particular things until certain levels. Hey, at least we don't have to run around the open world and discover traits anymore. Uh, hmm. um, oh, well, yeah, that was annoying. I'm not uh, I don't know. I think I'm not uh, the worst part about the new player thing is that you you know, you your abilities are literally locked and you can't you have to wait until levels. I think that was very silly. I mean, come on. You know, fine. You know, Guild Wars 2 is a casual game, but I think they can handle more than one button, okay? You know, I think I think they're all right with that. Um, but apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently that's too too complicated to have different skills. Uh, but um, no, believe me, I've seen people like physically in person that it's too much for them to have more than one skill. And I don't even, you know, it's funny because I don't think it's that. I think the intention was to have a smoother leveling curve, not just for leveling, but a learning experience as you go along. And I just don't think that that was implemented in all the right places to actually make that a thing. I think they removed certain things early on to hope that it smooths it out, or the intention to smooth it out, but then that intention was never really followed through on. Hmm. I don't, uh, I don't know. Does this make me an elitist that, I don't know, I didn't really struggle with the game's difficulty, even as a new pleb? No, neither did I, but... I think I think the game is not too difficult. Uh, I don't think anybody really struggles with the going from uh, 1 to 80, but I, I know that some people did struggle with some of the story steps at the levels they were at. Um, maybe that's part of the the change that they made for the new player experience. Wait, they struggled with what? With some of the, the story? Uh, yeah, some of the story instances. No, no, no. The personal story is terrible. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't beat the hammer, boss. Serena Ned should be. Oh be no! I, no! I mean, it's almost impossible. No, no, it's almost no. impossible to fail a good deal of those stories. Like they've removed the the failure on a good deal of those, unfortunately, uh, and. Yeah, the the personal story is just unfortunately it's just not really that great. It's unfortunate. Yeah. What well, what can what can they do? What can they do to fix that? Uh I it needs to be redesigned, but they don't really like the resources they would have to put into that, players would not be happy. So Yeah. And it's funny too because Switching gears to WoW, when Cataclysm came out, uh, Blizzard did a big overhaul to the world and all that stuff. And uh, players were not generally super happy about the resources and time and stuff that went into that. And Blizzard even said later on that in the long run, it really wasn't worth the development time that went into that. Wow, what, Stronghold? That. No, and to the in WoW the Cataclysm remake yeah. of the Cataclysm of, sucks. of the Nor of of Kalimdor and <coughs> Northern right. Kingdoms, Eastern Kingdoms, Western so, Kingdoms. In on paper it was a great idea, right? On paper it probably seemed like a great idea, but in execution, it's, it's just kind of funny that uh, WoW like Blizzard admits that uh, that that it wasn't worth it, and then. In some ways, the entire arena net uh, story model, business model, is to do exactly that over and over again. <clears throat> to to change the world over and over again to keep the immersion. Yeah. Huh. But that, the, isn't it a bit funny that that's kind of what Guild Wars 2 is supposed to do? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it doesn't. Hey, well, it does in does a lot it? of ways. Yeah, like a lot of the like just the permanent changes to the world, the actual terrain I'm talking about. Yeah, like what? Yeah, just like uh, or Gershor, etc. I mean, well, I mean, obviously they haven't done it everywhere. What, but... What's still what's still changed? Keswick Hills, Lion's Arch. Yeah, Lion's Arch, Keswick Hills. I think uh, they're gonna like blow up South Sun or something, probably. Yeah, it's yeah. Why not? Sure. Just blow it up. It's just gonna detonate. Something has to happen in South Sun. Why well, they remade it twice? Did they uh, remake it twice? Yeah. Well, the original, the original plus one remake, I guess. Wasn't a remake. They just added another event there. 
Yeah, they didn't change the map in any way. You know. I think uh, no, it needs to. It needs something. It needs Unless... to go to sleep. Brazil D and T. Brazil D and T needs can to you, go to sleep. Can you buy fifty blood rubies for two laurels? No, that's not how it works. Well, I mean, it, it kind of is, right? Sort of. With oh, the tools. sort of. You you go buy the tools for two laurels yeah. and then you go mine blood rubies. Yeah, and I guess it's fast. But uh, I mean, you can get you don't you don't have to. You can get your blood rubies slightly slower just with your endless gathering tools. It will be it will be slower, but it will you'll still get there eventually by mining all the nodes. The way it makes it sound is that I'm gonna pay two laurels and you're gonna give me fifty rubies, and that's that's not exactly how it works. Hmm. I think I, the, the thing is though, if we if we go back to the new player experience, do you not think that the new player experience is always going to be inherently not satisfactory just by the very nature of Guild Wars Two because it's nothing like any other MMO in the way that the new player experience works? I mean, what, what do people want? You know, do they want yeah, go harvest ten bandit asses or what? Is is you know is that <laughs> no. what they? But because you know, if they had that, then you know, people of WoW would feel right at home. You know, you know. Say, so, yeah, go kill, kill me some no, bandits. I mean, the I, goal, the Guild Wars Two definitely doesn't want to become more like WoW, just the opposite. You yeah, know? exactly. And doing yeah. so is bad. Is just a bad choice. Uh, and I and hey, I know lots of people are loving Legion right now, but and that's fine. But you don't want to. It's we've seen time and time again. It's a bad business decision to make your MMO try to be like WoW. You're just gonna fail. You're not going to compete, so don't bother. Yeah, be different. But isn't that the complaint that the new players have? Is that that they they go out into the world and then no one's pointing them? There's nothing to point them in the right direction. Well, that's why hearts exist in the first place. Yeah, but that it it's not exactly like that, though, is it? I mean, yeah, the first ever kind of living, you know, personal story things was, hey, you know, you should go and do these hearts. But after that, you have to wait until you get to level 10, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, in order to actually your get get your shiny green star telling you where to go to do your next story. And I think people, as soon as they hit level 10, they're like, oh shit, I've got to go and do this immediately. The green arrow is telling me to. So they'll <laughs> go off and run, do that, and they go, wait, my green arrow, it's gone. What do I do? But I guess we have the the weird compass thingy that tells you what to do, and it, it go go over here and explore stuff. I don't know. I think I have that turned off. Although I actually do like the idea. I think the idea is really cool. So that should be enough. The arrow tells them where to go. Simple. Just follow the arrows. That's how you play MMOs. You follow arrows. Pretty much. It'd be cool if they gave tomes of knowledge for map completion. Uh. What? What about just I don't level? Like the tome of knowledge thing. What about just level? Yeah, you know, is it just or experience instead yeah. of di just direct levels? It's, yeah, maybe. I, don't I think know. it does already. Well, oh yeah, it definitely does. Why would I even say that? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Or maybe there's an option after you beat a zone, it you can level up to the um, kind of highest the next level. Zone. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. say say if you finish Queensdale, you're level thirteen or whatever. Maybe you get a tome that says, "Oh, this is a level fifteen tome," and then you can move on yeah. to the next one. I think that, that actually might be a pretty good idea. You know, that actually uh, might be good. Heard you like leveling, so we added leveling because to your level. otherwise the player might go, "Oh, shit! I'm level thirteen, but but I, it says on the map I can't go to the next one until I'm level fifteen, so I should stay here and and, and level up and do some stuff again, to do some stuff again." Uh, but then, if you can level up, then you can just move on immediately. And we get RuneScape quest would not be that would not be a good idea. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that would that, the, the people would be very confused if we had RuneScape style quests. By the way, this is an automated reminder to stay hydrated. Oh, Thank shit. you. Yeah, I don't have anything. I I, I think you know it, it's it's, I've a, got it's a shame because the new player experience is very important to the game. It's just not important to veterans who are very vocal about the game. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and it seems, I don't know, I, I hear a lot of, I hear a lot, just not, just even in this chat right now, about people saying that their new player experience was not that great. So, if the new player experience is not that great, you're not gonna hook people into the game enough. 
So I don't know. But yeah, but they're not going to redo to commit resources again, to that right? again. You know how they can yeah. really hook new people into the game? That's a problem. How how, how would they do that, Brazil? Cocaine is if they had NPCs like we know you know the raid the NPCs in the Aerodome that are called like mercenaries that just walk around with like legendary weapons yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then they have like NPCs and showcasing the armor and like Vernon Brink and stuff. They could just put those in the starter zones. Like an NPC walking around with a twilight, like at night. Hmm. Something something just fun that's like time based that happens if you like go show up. I don't no. know. That, <laughs> no, you if I no. saw that, I saw someone with a twilight whenever I started out, and I thought, yeah, I think I'd like to get that one day. That's cool. But d and doesn't that give people the wrong idea, though? Because then you have... I saw a Reddit post, and it said, hey, I just hit level 80, uh, and now I was thinking of going for a, a legendary weapon, uh, or, or should I go for some ascended gear first? And then it's just, oh, you know, we don't, you don't want to be going for... I don't even know, you know, people are getting legendaries before they even get out of, you know, fucking, you know, rare gear. Yeah, I'm running around with rares, but hey, I've got a legendary weapon. It's just, uh, you know, no, 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 no. I don't know. Do you need anything other than rares for open world stuff? Not really. I guess. Uh, yes. You need ascended gear for everything. I watched Tekkit's workshop right. of videos. Yeah, Tekkit's <laughs> workshop. And he says you need great ascended guy, gear. Great guides. You should all go check it out, everybody. I think, make a good videos, deal of people, I think a good deal of people would enjoy the game if they had exotics for most of that content. Well, map completion gives you exotics. Yeah. Some. Some exotics. Yeah. It does. I think the personal story does, too, after a while. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've some, done it. Some crappy ones. But yeah. But, yeah. It gives you a choice of, like, pants or boots or whatever. I don't know. I mean, getting exotics is not difficult right but remember when they introduced ascended gear yeah ah, that was fun it's a gear grind people are still unhappy about that to this day <laughs> and four years later i only have one set of ascended gear wow slacker yeah yeah do you think there should be some what? system in in the game that wait are you gonna just question boots about his lack of ascended tryhard gear one set of ascended gear that's right for my PS Warrior. Me too. I'm I'm gonna delete down to one set of ascended gear. Oh, That's all I need. How many ascended sets do you have, Inks? Uh, three, four, five. I don't know. It's like six, I think. Look, I'm a I'm a poor poor player. I have I I just recently actually someone donated me money, which was very nice. I got two hundred gold, and then somebody else gave me ten gold. But uh, before then, I had like one gold make, to my name at make any some given time. Let's go. I can't do it. But 200 gold, I don't think you can make Ascended. You're yeah. rich now. You should do uh, raids. No the, the rewards in raids are really good. You get a lot of money. Oh, wait. Uh, I could do raids. I could, but uh, I'd have to come on my uh, you need crappy, crappy builds. Yeah. No, that boots, no, don't do that. You, you, unless you're kind of lucky, you don't get a lot of gold. Oh, okay. Unless you get ghostly infusions. Actually, if you account for getting ascendeds, the money is probably good from raids, actually. But if you don't need ascended gear, then you don't get anything, really. That's true, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I have a, a full set, and then I have, like, a piece here and there of ascended gear that I got from drops. I have, yeah, uh... Ra yeah. Raid has rewards? You would never yeah. know it. <laughs> Inks just doesn't get any. Poor guy. I got, I got lucky last week. What'd yeah. you get? Didn't you get something... Infusion. Ghostly Infusion, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's it. Um, I'm done for like six months. Wait, doesn't no, this no doesn't moves. this make me kind of really unlucky? Because I've only ever had one ghostly infusion drop, and I've been raiding with four accounts for a good amount of time. That makes yes, pretty unlucky. You're very unlucky. I don't know. Ghostly infusions. Because I know Brobo. Brobo, in, he's in chat right now. Okay, he has about he's actually dropped about five ghostly infusions. Yeah, but he's extremely lucky, and he just how? steals it out of How, out of how is the pocket. variant so high on RNG, guys? It's just like know. grave digger rolls. Yeah, actually, that's how is how is that actually possible though? Seriously, why is there so much variance on your grave digger damage? Like, on the golem, like it ranges between like twenty eight and thirty seven k, like below fifty percent. It is so stupid. 
I guess Perry the... still has zero. Zero, zero for Perry. Well, that's because you're an elitist, man. They actually rigged the RNG of elitists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, you play um, Thief and World vs. World, so you don't deserve anything. <laughs> yeah, and he plays Ebola Thief as well. He just goes uh, perma stealth oh. and puts traps on people, okay? That's just. You should be ashamed of yourself, man. That's just dirty. That's the worst. It is, it is dirty as fuck. What was Perry genius, hunting man? down. Uh, I think I was watching Sam play the other day, and like I think Perry was hunting him down. Yeah, he, he does that. Awesome. There was a point where. He was where... hunting down the entire salt. Uh, yes. For a yep. while there. Yeah, you know, there there and were then, two thieves after me, and they would just try and backstab me and kill me instantly, just for, just for hours on end. It was good. <laughs> that was fun. I remember killing Perry a couple of times that one time. The best thing about playing thief is stealing beasts on forest. Like people tunnel vision on those so hard, I'll just like stand off behind them a little bit, and like they don't notice I'm there. Maybe they do, and they just I don't know. But like as soon as I see that thing get to like thirty six percent health or something, I'll just combo it and take it and run away. It's so funny. Like you just steal it every single time. Yeah, it was actually it was know. actually an entertaining stream. Sam was like, "Okay, okay, leave me alone, leave me alone." And he's like, "Okay, guys, I think he's gone." And then backstab, backstab, dead. <laughs> backstab is really man. fun. Fucking thieves! <laughs> Fucking thieves! Get your ass back here. That's that is what you find yourself saying in World vs. World. Oh, oh, don't mind me. I just teleport across half the map because I'm playing thief. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Good stuff. There's some really funny and cool tricks you can do, like. Shadow step while you're casting black powder and then heart seeker through it and steal and you can just like blink onto someone from like 2000 range and they're just dead like you just kill them and they don't know what happened they're just dead and you black powder on top of them and stomp them and you just run away again. Mm -hmm. And then they report you for hacking. <laughs> that, that guy <laughs> when you were playing Revenant Teapot he's what? like. Same survivability oh, as soldiers. Oh my god! For yeah, surgery. yeah. I mean, obviously, I am clearly the best revenant in the game because I, I was obviously—I don't know. This guy obviously was not happy. I mean, we, we, we obviously we were winning. We were just busy winning some PvP, and at the end of the game, a guy just—he whispers me and says, "Hey, you know, you've got oh yeah, nice hacks, dude. Same, mm -hmm. same survivability as soldiers. Same damage." as Berserker, and you cleanse like an Elementalist. That's not a possible combination! Enjoy your ban, reported! And then he blocked me. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> uh, That's pretty yeah. good. I, I remember getting reported a few times when I first came out with that uh, Elementalist build. Uh, way back when people were bad at PvP. The fresh Try to one? play fair next time. Use your hack somewhere else. Reported. <laughs> it, it's funny, as if telling somebody they're reported makes a difference to the person who's who's doing it. They could care less. I, oh, actually, you know what they need to really fix in in um in in this game actually is if you block someone, you should not be allowed to whisper them. Okay. If you want, if you block someone, you obviously don't want to talk to them, okay? But if yeah. you if you block me because I said easy after I killed mm -hmm. you, okay? And then I started dancing on your body at the end of a game, and then you get angry and start whispering me, I should be able to reply to you and make you even more angry, okay? And and that is not currently possible in the game. That's actually one of the worst features of Guild Wars 2, I'm just gonna say that. That mm -hmm. they can they can say stuff to you, but you can't reply. Because obviously, when someone's angry, I want to make them more angry, because that's funny. Uh, and especially when they're, when they're in that mindset, it's very easy as well. You know, Brazil will be very familiar with this. He, he, he knows what I'm talking about. When they're already triggered and tilted, th it's so easy just to push them over the edge even more. Because they're not, they're not thinking correctly. And that is, that's, they're denying me one of the most beautiful things about PvP, actually. Just, well, just triggering I mean, they... people when they're, when they're really angry. If if you block somebody, there's you shouldn't be able to communicate back and forth anymore. Period. I don't think. But I, well, do, do they talk after they've blocked, or do they talk before they block? Like, after. do they whisper no, and then block? After. Yeah. They, after. Block they can you still, whisper. They still whisper. Yeah, they can still whisper you. Yeah. Because yeah. that is the worst. Yeah, I've had it a few times when I've been whispered uh, in a PvP match, and then I try to respond and I'm blocked. I always assume that they whispered and then blocked me. No. But. 
Oh my god, that's the worst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Exactly. Well. Actually, I, I, I intended we got massively sidetracked, but I was gonna say, do you think there should be some kind of recommended gearing for players as they go towards the end game? Because you know, people legitimately well, try and do no. raids with like soldiers' gear, and then because... go, "Oh shit, this is fucking impossible! I give up, arena." Hmm. Did you see the dev post on Reddit the other day? That thread about I don't know what I'm doing on Necromancer, but all my armor's pink and it's fun. And a dev responded and said, yes, that's the correct way to play the game. Oh, dear just, God. Just have fun with it. And it's Wait. just like... Oh, yeah, I mean... Pink? What do you mean? Like, the color pink? Yeah, they just yeah, dyed it all pink. pink, and they were... It, it's oh, oh. such a stupid thread. But, I mean, it is the correct way to play the game if that's what she's doing. But she's not trying to do... She wasn't trying to do any raids or no, anything. No, but then you have people that go into raids and do that. And then whenever I yell at them, they quit the guild. <laughs> well, not only well, that, but they, they they have a they have a false impression of what's at the the actual raid content, right? They they actually think, oh wow shit, you you have to be really good to do these raids. Oh, you we're don't. not we're not doing anything to this 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 Veil Guardian. This what pick? How did QT do this in in two minutes? How is this possible? It's just well, yeah, it's because they weren't using <laughs> fucking soldiers' gear. You know, it's just. Are you I mean, sure? <laughs> you hear they weren't using apothecary's gear? Yeah, uh, actually, that's 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 the next one. Low man kills with like soldiers' gear or whatever. Yeah, well, I mean, you can do gear. it. You can do it with greens, right? So why even bother to buy ascenders? If well, I mean, it come on, like, you know? there, there there are so many things that go wrong, and there are just people just like using default keybinds. The default keybinds in this game are horrible. Horrible. Unless How you have you really gonna... long fingers, right? No, like, uh, you could be Oscar Peterson and it still wouldn't make mm. a difference. Good reference, I like that. You know him. Yeah, of course. He, he plays piano. Course. He doesn't yeah, he know does. Oscar. But, uh, I mean, like, it, it's just like, alright, your elite skill is potentially one of the most important things you have, and it's bound to zero. And then sometimes people bind their special action keys to delete, or their weapon swap, or whatever it is. Wow, I mean, I, I that's know, pretty. I, that's pretty toxic, Brazil. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, wow, what an elitist like, you are. I hear stuff like that. I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Like I don't understand how you play like that. I once bound my special action key to Alt, and uh, and I tried to like use my F four skill. Oh time. no! <laughs> that, that, oh wow! Punished! Punished! Uh, I, like people comment about how my keybinds are really weird, and they're not weird. Like, is it because you have them all on your mouse, right? Yeah, like I I bound everything that's a utility skill or movement close to WASD. I don't ever have to move any further than two keys away to use anything. And all of my weapon skills and my elite skill are on my mouse. And it's like, wow, this is really efficient. Like... Mela, that's good. Wait, Aren't you in it? Snow Crows and they're irrelevant now? Okay. <sighs> Just like D&T, right? You're in a guild that doesn't matter because they set dungeon run records. And now those are obsolete. Okay. Anyways, we'll move on. So, yeah, like, it's just like... I, I don't get it. There, I mean, that is a fair point. There are skill clickers and other stuff. And when you combine, like, skill clickers and horrible keybinds and bad gear and just, like, all kinds of misinformation, it just makes this just mess of people that don't know what they're doing. I just feel like I think, I think your guild should probably teach you that or let you know like what you're supposed to gear what you're supposed to bring and, and that sort of stuff i don't know if the game necessarily needs to because i mean there's some i guess there's some standards the game could try and teach you and tell you like what you need for whatever but i feel like you're gonna learn that through your guild by doing that content Ooh, i don't know about that mm. that's gonna depend on what kind of guild you join mm. well i mean and and you're 
success in in those instances is going to vary, I guess. But yeah, there are going to be guilds that just like reinforce the play how you want, and that raids are bad, and that they you know they just make toxic elitists, and you should never try them. But what if the person you know they were to try raids and they thought they were fun? Like, there's just, like, I don't know. There's a huge variety of people, and there's a huge disparity between all of them. Like, between, I guess, people like us, people like Salt and whatever, and then people who are just in, like, you know, whatever guild that does whatever. That just We just do completely different things. And I don't know. There's just a huge gap. Because there are people that just play the game so differently. And yeah. yeah. I, I don't see that as a problem. Though. I don't know that I, I, it's necessarily I th a problem. I think it's a potential. I think it's a potential problem though, because yeah. some oh, people yeah. will some sure. people will will try raids, okay, and and then they'll go, oh wow, we really can't do this, can we? And and the thing is, if they were in a better gear setup, or you know, they they had a team composition that is more sensible, then maybe they would be better off, or they'd make decent enough progress that they'd be willing to come back. And have another mm. go, right? Because I mean, look at fucking salt, guys. We have the correct compositions, most you know, vaguely decent compositions, and Bentley. we, you know, right? And 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 raiding is still painful, okay? Even with oh, you know proper gear true, and shit, actually. you know. Uh, oh. And and you know, imagine if your first time you're just raiding with some friends, first time, and you're all running fucking you know, clerics warriors or something, you know, you're not gonna get anything done there. Uh, so, right. I don't know. But, and, and each person is going to be different. I understand what you guys are saying, but if I was in a group that didn't know what was happening, I would go in, I'd go to good old YouTubes and I'd type in Slothosaur to find out what the hell we're doing wrong, why we cannot beat this boss and why we're so terrible, and do a little research and figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. I mean, granted, not every single person is going to do that. They're just going to get frustrated and quit, which is a shame. But at the same time, uh, un unless there's different tiers of difficulty for the raid, I mean, I, I just don't think that there's... I mean, what's the better way to introduce them to raids? Because the difference between fractals and raids, that's not a good introduction, right? It's supposed to go dungeons, fractals, raids, but it doesn't really work. They're trying to do that with fractals because they basically made Bloom Hunger a raid boss. Yeah, except they fun. gave it stupid mechanics and it's way too long. Uh, I do like Bloom Hunger a lot. All right, I, I, so I think they should do more a, like that. There's and a part of long, the event I, called I like Survive this. the Onslaught of Spirits. Yeah. Ah, that's kind of boring. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's way too long. It has a timer that doesn't mean anything because you just keep killing the spirits anyways. They don't do anything. All you have to do is just run around in a circle. And, you know, like, kite them into it and maybe cleave them down. And it's just not fun. It's boring. It's stupid. It's bad design. And mm. then, essentially, all Bloom Hunger is is just kited around with five, five condition necros. And it just dies. Like all the Frankles. You can't just raid with a party of, <laughs> of like, only necromancers. Only necromancers. I but think you can, though. That, I mean, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess you can, and you can only press Gravedigger twice and still kill the boss. So, oh, wow, nice meme, Brazil. But, uh, like, fractals are just trivial if you know how to make them trivial. And I mean, I guess maybe you can do that with raids to a degree, but it's so bad in fractals. Like, they just need to redo them again for the 12th time, and then maybe they'll get it right. Who knows? I think that you could just make um, adjustments to some of those things to make it better, to make it a better experience. I definitely think I that mean, fractals should be a kind of like a bridge between to, to raids, right? They should be. Yeah, yeah. It should be very clear that it's a stepping stone to get to raids because you already have the capacity to get. You know, if you're a little bit lucky, you can get your ascended gear through doing fractals. And actually, right. when we have our new map on with a new living story, you'll. I'm probably gonna say you're gonna be able to get ex accessories, right, of, of of any stat, of any of the new stats as well. well. So that means there are gonna be quite solid ways to get your raid ready gear without even doing raids, because at, right now the only way to get Viper's accessories is by raiding. Right? Or oh, you can craft exotic shitty ones, fine, you know, but screw that yeah, shit. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say Bloodstone Finn, but that's right, you can't get yeah. the accessories yet. That'll yeah. probably be with the next patch. 
Ah, yes. Actually, no. I agree with my I, I disagree with myself. You can get exotics. That's good enough. But they're kind of annoying to make, right? Yeah. Um, so, you yeah, can kill missions. Fine. And no, if they nerf Necro, I'm going to be really sad. Come on. Don't... No, not knock Fecro. Holy shit, guys. Come on. No, they, they're they absolutely going to nerf Necromancer. They're going to nerf Epidemic into the ground, and Necromancer's no. going to be worthless again. No, 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 no. If they if do they that... Arena Net, no. Don't do this. Because Please. Power Necro DPS is nowhere close to being competitive. So it's, then why? If you are ultimate tryhard min max like I am, where literally everything is as perfect as it can be, like you'll be lucky to pull 28k DPS. So and then why would they nerf Necro? Uh, because the epidemic. This, this is this is what I was getting to. Because Necromancer is invulnerable and has you can do 27k DPS, but you have life steal on everything, and you've got 30,000 HP, and you have Death Shroud, where you have a whole other HP bar that you can just go into and still kill stuff. Blah blah blah. And then Condi Necro is like, okay, yeah, like you do good damage, but it's all based on minions mostly. That's like half your damage, sometimes way more than that. And it has epidemic. It destroys projectiles. It sucks off everyone's conditions, and you can put them back on. And it's like, okay, this is like the ultimate abuse class. What and if they're just they made they're a gonna... change to uh, one trait? Instead of nerfing Condi Necro, they could uh, buff Power Necro by making decimate defenses um, for every percent or whatever amount of uh, crit chance you have over 100, you do an extra certain amount of damage. I think that's just too complicated for people to understand. That's going to be the justification for that. Uh. Realistically, what Decimate Defenses should be is 1% extra damage and condition damage per vulnerability stack. You could that, just... Because yeah, Necromancer could, has yeah. like... Two damage modifiers. It has like close to death, and then it has spiteful talisman or whatever. That's pretty much it. Because but but look yes. at tempest, tempest and warrior have like five thousand damage. They have like over a hundred percent in damage modification, and power necro doesn't have anything. I'm thinking a really good like how much more damage would a power necro have to have in order to be competitive? It would need an extra twenty five percent, let's say, damage, right? Okay. Right? Probably? I mean, it needs to be over 30k. But that's not going to happen because you can't have a super DPS class that has, you know, 30,000 health and never dies. Well, it, it, I think I, you, can have it, you can have it lower DPS, but it brings a bit of utility. You know, you're going to have your transfusion, right? Yeah. And you're going to have your AO, not- you're going to have everyone having lifesteal. I mean, you potentially, you could even bring something like Well of Blood for kind of... It's a little bit like Wash the Pain Away, right? You know, it puts down an AoE heal, etc., etc. Uh, you know, like the Thief Venom and Wash the Pain Away. So you've kind of got that piece of utility in your team. Then you've got your Flesh Golem, which is a CC effect you can have. You've also The Necromancer itself already has kind of decent CC on its own, right? With, you know, you've got the Warhorn, you've got your Reaper Shroud stuff, Fear, which is something that... Uh, it's Necromancer is going to provide him. Fear's pretty good, actually. 100 break bar per second. That's not bad, yeah. honestly. So you've got that amount of utility. So if you added a little bit more damage to it, I think you would be very competitive choice, right? They could, they could honestly... I don't know if I would say they would fix it 100%, but it would be... If they fixed Decimate Defensives, or if they changed Decimate Defenses, made it modify damage, and or they... Fix greatsword to where grave digger just doesn't suck, and the auto attack is not like in PvP greatsword necro like power necro is just worthless. Like if you play it, you're you just you're never gonna win anything. It's bad. And they could speed up grave digger. They could speed up the auto attack. Get rid of the stupid aftercast on them, and that'd make it like just way better. But then dagger becomes much less damage. I don't know. There are other problems. Let's think about this for a second, though. Uh, how much, just from gear, perce- uh, with um, precision, how much uh, percent to crit ch- uh, to crit can you get, just from uh, perce- uh, precision? So if you run full assassins, what do you mean? Or something? Full assassin. Full. Uh, no, let's say full berserkers. What if they are you going for like the bonus over cap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Because because let's say you could running full berserkers and then you have your decimate to set fences giving you another fifty, and then uh, in shroud you get another fifty from uh, from that uh, trade. Yeah. So let's say you get total with like assassin sigil uh, with um, accuracy sigil total like hundred and eighty percent crit chance, probably with all the buffs. Uh, then you would be able to do 80% over the thing. So let's say they made it so that for every 3% uh, over 100, you get an extra percent damage. Realistically, I think the best thing to do, and this would be really cool too, it'd be neat, make it like Mordekaiser, League of Legends, where your utilities cost health. You could increase the damage that way because you have this gigantic yeah, health pool. You could have you could make Soul Eater actually useful. And it could be like great sword attacks do fifty percent more damage at the cost of like five percent of your HP per cast. So okay, grave just, digger, that, that would be a new that would have to be a new uh but you'd be changing you're say, you're saying you're changing all the all the skills basically with No, that. you just change the Soul Eater trait in Reaper. Because there's absolutely no reason to take anything other than decimate defenses yeah. ever. So what does your soul leader currently do? Soul leader reduces the the recharge on greatsword skills by like twenty percent and makes them steal health. It's worthless. Okay. And you would make it turn into something like like greatsword attacks do twenty percent extra damage at the cost of some percentage of your health. So then you can actually utilize the lifesteal more effectively and the enormous HP pool. And you'd have to take Berserker's mm. armor for more crit chance, and you'd have a smaller HP pool. Something like that would be really fun and cool and unique. Nothing else has that. I yep. think that'd be really awesome if they did something like that. It'd make you play very carefully. Because, oh no, I just took an attack, and now I'm at like 20% health. You might it accidentally suicide. <laughs> it, it would make Scholar Runes a lot more of a hassle to use. You could pick something else, like Infiltration or whatever, just to make Gravedigger even better. It'd be kind of interesting. Actually, the, that kind of makes it sound like it would be a really good um, idea for a new Elite spec. Yeah. That me that mechanism in general. I, I mean, it could be, but I think Reaper would be like perfect candidate for that still, because Grave Digger and hitting big numbers is like the entire point of <laughs> Soul Eater is just a bad trait. It's it is you, why you should never use it. It's just bad. Mm -hmm. It would they be could, amazing. They if could make it, it stronger be, though. Oh, well, yeah. What if instead of stealing a hundred health, it's uh, it stole a percentage of the damage you deal. Yeah, that could work too. With Grave Diver, I mean. Grave Diver. Grave Diver. Well, what, what if they just buffed Soul Eater? So maybe it was, so you steal more like 500 life instead of, what is it, like 200 right now? I still don't think that's worth it. Does that it apply? It, it doesn't apply. Uh, wait, yeah, yeah. So it, it, maybe, what about 1,000 then? Every Grave Digger steals 1,000 life. I'm saying a percentage of life. the Grave Digger you do. So let's say 10% of the damage the Grave Digger normally does. Mm. So in a normal situation, your Grave Digger does maybe 9,000, like PvP or something. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's okay. a good smart. That, that's a good way to balance it, actually. Yeah. So and that then, wait, wait, in raids, that means you could be stealing th 3,000 life. 1,000 damage each time. So <laughs> oh, it would be a shit. boost of 3,000 DPS, <laughs> approximately. Yeah, because you, you can get to the crit cap pretty easily as well with just gear as well. You need, what, 63% 60, yeah. or something with, with yeah. full raid buffs, right? And they could also easily tweak it so that it scales off a of power a lot better or something than it does healing you. Like, it, it not, maybe not scale off to power, but I mean, like, it'll do 3,000 damage but only heal you a certain amount. Because, yeah, actually gaining 3,000 life every second seems a little bit OP. <laughs> In raids. Well, but to a certain extent, you kind of have that if you play the condition necromancer, right? You have every single one of your minions... Well, if you run blood magic, right? So that means every single one of your minions is stealing 80 health, and it att mm. they attack every few seconds. Okay. Yeah. And if you have them all up because people are healing yeah, them... Yeah, yeah, you got your minions healing you. I, I don't know. Yeah, especially, if you, especially if you run the blood fiend as well. I know that you know the signet is very popular because... It's, you know, group group helpy, you know, charges Celestial Avatar and shit or whatever. 
But if you run the Blood Fiend and you have Blood Magic, you, the uh, Condi Necromancer is basically immortal uh, throughout the entire fight. You know, conditions don't mean anything to you. All your attacks are siphoning health, especially if you're cleaving. If you're cleaving, you know, if you're hitting five targets with your life, to, life so you just heal so much. You've got Blood Bond as well, which is going to heal you a tiny bit. Well, although actually your procs will just get stolen, but never mind, because you're in a raid. I don't know, I mean, you just you just don't really die when you're just constantly lifestealing. Yeah, the scaling on lifesteal fucking sucks, and the damage as well. It's like, it's terrible. It's terrible. So you get 25 minions up, let's yeah. say. Lifestealing at 80 per hit. They attack once every two seconds or something? Yeah, it is something like that. It's once every few seconds. So it's 40 a second times 25. Yeah. Okay. A thousand, a thousand a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and bear in mind your Blood Fiend is also healing you for a... It's about a thousand every... what? I don't know how yeah, often it, it's it like a It's like a healing signet yeah. with a physical manifestation. Exactly, yeah. So you, you, the amount of sustain that your Condi Necro has is just ridiculous uh, in raids if you've got... If you've got Blood Magic, obviously. If you don't have mm -hmm. Blood Magic, it's, you know... You're a little bit you know, more reliant on being healed, but even then you still have... You still have your shroud, and you're pretty durable anyway, because of just Keep, the, the inherent nature of Necromancer itself. Teapot, Krost is baiting you, by the way. What's he saying? What's what's going on here? Does, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Does anyone here consider life still to be their favorite mechanic? Is it is Inks the one? No, no, no. I don't no. know who is, it is. Is it, no, is it Boots? What you, um, no, no, no! You're, you're not. You're, it's not your favorite mechanic. No, it's Mad King Runes is my favorite. Oh, mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it Brazil? I don't, oh no, I, I, I don't know. You like life still, Brazil? I like I, I like using health as a manner to do more damage. That oh. was why I liked Mordekaiser and played It must Mordekaiser be me sometimes. then. Yes, it's me. I like life yeah. still. Buff blood magic. Hashtag buff blood magic, guys. It's amazing. Blood magic is probably the best specialization in the whole game, honestly. Mm. It's just the coolest thing. Yeah, it's so cool. How, how can you not like blood magic, guys? I mean, look at all this cool utility. You got blood bond, vampiric presence, and transfusion. That is, come on, that's dank as fuck, guys. What if there is a trait in blood magic or in some new elite specialization that that increased the amount of life steal you do based on how low your health is? They, they kind of tried to do that, right? There's last rites, uh, if you remember, and you get more healing power the lower you are, and so kind of oh. the more life steal you do. I mean, they, they, yeah, that was... What was yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, it it, it, it no, helps the healing aspect else. of it because of the... It's kind of, you know, the healing... The healing scales off healing power and the, the damage scales off power. So I see what you mean, Boots, and I think actually that would be really cool. There was you know, a warrior trait. I think it, Nike mentioned it in chat. I think it was called Desperate Power... Because stick and move is the one where you do more damage when your endurance is at full. Desperate power, I think, was 20% damage when you were under 50% health. And, like, people like Purple Miku and Goku, I think, tried to do desperate power Lupica solos. But it's just so hard to manage and do that, like, it wasn't ever really possible. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, something, like, I, I would really, I like Boots' idea a lot of life skill, life still, life steal scaling. Yeah, um, it would work so great with your idea. Would, yeah. Like, have, have a maybe a new elite spec that's completely based around you taking damage for the skills you use and it doing more damage for, or I don't know, you just take damage for the skills you do for some reason, and then the lower your health, the more life still you have. Or mm -hmm. and it'd be a balance between going up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good for that, but if you're going to play still Condition Reaper, then that really doesn't help at all. No, you wouldn't. You have Decimate Defenses. It's a new elite spec, man. you, I mean, more bleeds. All that being said, do you think there's going to be any balance changes, really, come the 20th? Someone said, I think it was Nike said there's probably going to be a balance change in, like, for, for yeah, there probably would be. I think it was Nike. I don't know. I think PvE is relatively healthy right now, for sure. I don't. Uh, what do you I don't, think? I just. I don't. I don't think there's going to be very much just because the season doesn't end to October third for PvP, and usually oh. balance happens after that, right? Yeah. They need to. They need to change elementalist again. They need to put the staff cooldowns back the way they were, and they need to reduce the damage, because the way they have it set up now is honestly really stupid. Like. I was kind of spiteful for a little while because they ruined my engineer rotation. They just deleted Fireforge Trigger out of the game. 
But like after having played Elementalist a little bit after that, it's just dumb. Like the rotation's stupid. And like that was not the correct way to nerf it. Lucky. And whoever did that just didn't really think about it very much. Or doesn't know how to play Elementalist because maybe they click their skills and they have default keybinds or something. I don't know. I guess that's a little bit of a, a shots fired, but whatever. It mm. just wasn't the correct thing to do. It probably won't. In my opinion, actually, they probably won't make a balance change because we're kind of in the middle of PvP right now, right? Yeah. yeah. So they pro would probably do it after the season. Unless did they yeah. did they change it last time during the season? No, right? No. no. It'd be okay. great if they nerfed engineer again because they're like really impossible to kill. They just run around and they have. This is oh, oh boy. They need to delete all of these stupid passive traits where it's like, oh, I'm at twenty percent health. Here goes an elixir S, and it resets my heal skill. And Revenant, oh, I'm at 20% health. Here's a, you know, Glint's Bastion or whatever the Shield yeah. 5 is. Or, you know, oh, I'm at 20% stealth health. I, I'm stealthing and running away. Oh, you hit me with a CC. Here's a 10 second long taunt. Wrecked. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking wrecked. What? 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 Demolish. Why does stuff like that? What? Like, this is I. I have never ever, like I, I never understood why anyone would ever take those traits because I just mostly PVE. It's like oh these suck. Why would you use them? And then you get into PVP and everyone literally takes all of those, <laughs> and they're they're so annoying to deal with. It's so irritating. It's like okay, I've maybe I've finally killed this engineer. You know, I've been you know getting him down. Like, he has a, a million, he has his Bulwark Gyro, he has Protection Injection, you know, he's got his Elixir S, I'm about to kill him, there he is, he's getting lower, oh, okay, he's back at 100%, and he just wasted 10 seconds running around with his passives and, you know, whatever, it's stupid. Dumb, bad game design. Well, bro, bro by saying if you remove those things, you should also remove things like Bolt to the Heart, and I actually kind of agree with that statement, I'd rather have traits that actually do something that physically manifests in the world than just, ah, 20, ah, fuck it, 20% more damage, under 50% health, you know? I, I'd rather have something that actually does something cool, right, you know, I'll, I, 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 even if it's something really silly that would kind of be round about the same, say something like, uh, you know, in, you know, every, every few strikes, you, you strike, you get a, like a giant thunderclap kind of just tickles your opponent and they take a bit of extra damage while they're under 50% health or something, right? You know, it, it's it's something that actually manifests in reality rather than, oh, hey, my meteors hit for 20% more now. This, yeah, that's great. But hey, that, that, that's just personal Pass. preference for me, you know? Yeah, Fresh is a great example of this. It's a really active trait that does stuff that affects how you play, right? Yeah, I've always liked, wanted, uh, what's it called? Lightning Rod to be good and I've always tried to use it, but it's never really... I mean, it, it's had its moments, but I just want to run a lightning rod uh, tornado for the rest of my life. Or not, with the, way, the way tornado is, you can probably get away with that now, honestly. Mm. Tornado is really funny. It is. Yeah. It is. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go away. lightning rod, tornado, hop into water for the vulnerability, extra 20% damage. And go around tornadoing everybody. Just Fun meeting time. people. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go, guys. Buff lifesteal uh, and give us really cool traits. That's our design advice to ArenaNet. Thank you. Fix for... Revenant. Fix Revenant? What's wrong? Oh, the, the, the hammers. What's wrong? What's not wrong? Yeah. I don't know. It's really easy to play in PvP, and I'd probably have gotten Legend in a day if I just played Revenant instead of Thief. There you go. You just, you just, I don't know. It's dumb. That means it's fine. You can be literally the worst player in the entire game, but just get carried by Valen and playing a Revenant, and you can get to Legend for free. Uh oh, oops, shots fired. Whoops. But whatever. You can, uh, Revenant, especially in solo queue, has a great, great carry capacity. Yeah, you can kill people easily. And, and you're pretty good. too. Yeah, Guardian, Guard just, uh, Guardian's good in you know, solo queue. Mender's amulet in just 2v1 or 1v2 people and just hold a point forever. That's yeah. funny as well.
And you can just spam. Well, I, I, you can just spam revives too. It's fucking yeah, cancer. Yeah, you can. Yeah, feels bad. A man. lot of revs are bad. They are bad. You're right. But well, they don't really have to be good. If if you're a player who knows what to look for against a revenant, they're they're pretty easy to kill. Yeah, and people don't understand for some reason. Like, stop attacking them when they have their glint heal on. No, attack them as much as possible to heal them to full health. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, they they use the Glint Hill when they're low. Finish them off, Brazil. Come on, finish him. It's the whole point. You got to kill people. Come on. Are we sure the next expansion pack will be released before 2018? I'm pretty I sure. Mean, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say it's, it's about a year. 16 now. Right? I would, it's, it's I would a, guess, but probably about a I'm, year from from now, right? I would guess at an announcement this winter. You guys I don't think rant about perma quickness ranger. I mean, rangers just is that ridiculous. like the power ranger with longbow? Because that's not a very good build from what I've seen. Like you kind of just like go on them and kill them. Like they have signet of stone or whatever, but rangers that play that build don't really know what they're doing, so they don't use their pets, and like you kind of just go kill them. I don't know. You just run I, smoke I, scale. You don't have to know. The ranger build. build that annoys me is the permanent immobilized ranger. Well, ancient ancient C is just a pain in the ass, but it, I don't yeah. think I don't think druid is too annoying really. In world versus world, it's just annoying. It's uh, yeah, because they have the longbow and the staff, and they just ping you with the longbow at 13, 14, 1500 range out out of out of any reach that you could possibly have. And then you're immobilized there, and their pet just wails on you for a little while, and they're staying there very far away. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. That's quite a lot of annoying things. <laughs> just run smoke scale and go AFK. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty, Pretty much. much. <laughs> Whenever you play against a ranger, you're not playing against a ranger, you're playing against the pet anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing's changed there. I don't know. What were we even talking about? Yeah, I was. I like was. You away with staff. I was winning a one v one the other day, and there was a ranger just sitting on midpoint, who just sent his smoke scale like it was following me, and it never stopped. And then just out of nowhere, just jumped and knocked me down, and then I got killed. It's like, all right, <laughs> I just, I just won. Was was winning a one v one, and then there's a pet that just jumps, and I'm dead. Cause like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I should have paid more attention to it and seen it coming. I probably should have. So it's partially on me, but it's just, all right. Bristleback is Maez. Dumb. They failed trying to run Maez's longbow build. I don't know who Maez oh, is. Me neither. Or Miaz. Yeah, I don't know who that is. No, well, no idea. Maybe they're on NA, so they're completely irrelevant. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Wait a second, I'm on NA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we want to take questions from the audience? They they never ask us anything. They always ask us stuff like, "Hey streamer, uh, if Harambe, yeah, if fucking something. Harambe." And you know what the questions <laughs> will be about today, right? Nope, I didn't know. The <laughs> but... Miaz is a good EU PvP. -er. Oh shit, he's on pro... EU. Are they a pro player? Like I honestly don't know who they are. Yeah, I have VN. no idea who that is. VN Big Nation. <laughs> I'm terrible. Like I don't know players. I apologize, guys. I have no idea. No. How many living season three episodes will there be? They're the number know. one legend in EU. I mean, it's again. I I still don't know. You're not telling me anything. What does it mean to be the number one legend? It means you played the most games. It means you play <laughs> turret engineer. <laughs> oh, I remember turret. Oh, they're I they're not, that build. They're not a pro. Well, that, that's probably. I mean. Sure There's a I difference between being number one in Legend and being a pro league player. <laughs> That's a good image by Nistrix there. <laughs> I mean, they're probably a pretty good player, I would say. Sure. Just look at this picture. Oh, man, yeah. You could have... The one that Nistrix posted? Yeah. You're looking good there, Inks. <laughs> 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 Why is my head bigger than my body? <laughs> Pretty good, actually. 
if, uh, if you scale it a little bit more and color correct a little bit and make the beer a little bit more believable, that'd be very, very... Have you guys tried Flame Legion runes on Guardian to help with Epidemic, good stuff. sometimes caring about the guard's duration instead of the Necros? See, that's another problem with Epidemic, Mar because yeah, it's I, not we, consistent. We, we shouldn't be doing this. We, you know, Epidemic should be have consistent results every time, right, guys? But it doesn't. Yeah. Or just run a Burn Guardian. Pew, pew, pew. It's bad. Yeah, I know. Well, if you run normal Guardian, uh, you actually get a good chunk of burns anyway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have yeah. a question. Is Nuki trash? What do you guys think? Who's Is he trash? Who's, nu who's Nuki? Who's Nuki? He play, he's, he's in QT. He's an elitist. Oh. Uh, Is he in chat right now? I've never even heard of them. Nuki is Perry? Wait, did, did, yeah. did he do any of the record runs? Okay, if if he was in the record runs, he's confirmed trash. Oh wait, no, not trash. If he wasn't, then he's confirmed trash. I want to see. I mean, if you aren't getting world records in Guild Wars Two, I mean, come on, just it's it's probably best just to not play. You know, simple as that. A thousand gold, Robo. One K gold. And, and I'll stop calling you a toxic elitist that you oh. are. Apparently, Nuki wiped on Swamp. Oh no. Uh oh. That's oh, a G kick. That's, that's that's, that's, a a QT. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a G kick. Yeah. That's they, a G kick. Yeah, this is a little known fact about QT guys. This is the true story. They actually operate on an actual live system. That's why they don't have enough people to do normal runs anymore. They have to do five men. And if <laughs> they, they, you know, they are actually a bit like cats. You know, if they actually have when you join QT, you are assigned uh, about fifty lives. Okay, and every time you die in a raid, you actually lose one life. Uh, and what started out as a normal Gorsival run, they actually wiped so many times on Gorsival, they were only left with five people at the end, and that's, that's why true. that's why it took them so long to do it, because they actually had to kick players from the guild while they were just trying to do Gorsival. They just ran out of people, and so they were forced to spend a massive amount of gold on fully optimizing this party uh, in order to actually be able to do Gorsival, uh, no updraft. That said, QT is five. recruiting, so uh, go apply at QT. DDOS.com? <laughs> I think that's a thing. Uh, I, think, I, I, I think at this point, there, there, is so, there are so many memes that you guys should, on your website, you should have just a law section. The QT law. Quantify law. It'll be great. You're going to have a backstory. This user is a known troll in the community. <laughs> He's placing the CX and the CX command in chat, and that's a command to DDoS. <laughs> it calls Shindy, his, uh, yes. the army's for September 20th, we're going to the Ring of Fire. Yeah! Items. Pretty cool, huh? Confirmed. Yeah. There's a lot of articles, like, earlier in the week. Oh, uh, see Oh, no! No, please! Oh, no! No! <laughs> uh, Don't need us! us. No, it oh, no, it's happening! <laughs> we're screwed, guys. But I think we've we've uh, we've we've come to the end of tea time. I think, guys, when when we're resorting to just spamming CX in yeah. the chat, um, I'm I think out of tea. Um, he's out, and we've run out of tea. So how can it be tea time without the tea? So we will it's just uh, quickly every other tea time ever. Let's just engage in some uh, shameless self advertisement. Okay, not saying how, but I heard. Oh, oh okay, Nike. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, oh so, <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, let's go. Brazil. Who are you? Start us off. Explain who you are. Hi, my name is Team Talima. Please follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, if you're QT, just stay away. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Okay. There you go. You're muted, Teapot. Oh no, muted. Uh oh. <laughs> He's like, what happened? Oh, he wears pants. I didn't know that. I don't. <laughs> Such a random thing. Oh, pants. <laughs> ah, pants. Who would have thought? I'm always, I'm always concerned. You're always concerned that people are not wearing pants? That's right. Because yeah. I don't. It would be weird if both of us weren't. Okay, then. Hi, I'm Mighty Teapot's Pants. You can find me on the floor where I belong. You should follow the stream to see more pants. Alright, there we go. Ah, hey. Did you, like, pull out the plug with your foot or something? No, uh, just... My mic just broke. I just had to, um, just had to... Like, his. Oh, I'll just mute myself again. I Here wonder... If... Alright, 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what that's what happened. Like mine earlier, like it just it, the mute button was on somehow. Like I don't know. I wonder. Did you update Skype recently? Probably, uh, maybe. I, I may have. I I did, and my microphone's been acting up since. So I wonder if that's the culprit. I don't know. Yeah. Bam. Mm -hmm. All right, boots. Who are you? Or maybe you did that while I was trying to nope. fix my microphone. No. Nope. Explain. Just talking about your explain who you exist. Uh, I am Boots from World of Enders. Uh, you can find me at my channel, a uh, YouTube channel, World of Enders. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing on it for a little while, <laughs> but there'll be stuff there. Don't worry. Un Boots underwater bad builds. Come on, what are you talking oh about? Oh my god. You haven't even tapped yeah. into the underwater power. Imagine. Imagine if Bub Bubble Steve appears and, and I just have all that untapped potential right all, there. All that untapped talent yeah I you, mean, you've got on. a whole new series to do that mm -hmm. yeah i need to know what to do when i'm underwater i have no idea be a thief <laughs> or warrior that's about it there you go all right Atalanti is streaming not a good idea uh we're not no 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 not a nice. smart plan with who's in chat guys all right yeah, see, look, one up, one up. We're not gonna host. Look at what he's already ranked one of Twit of Guild Wars Two Twitch. Hosting him is literally pointless. It doesn't do anything. All right, Inks, who are you? Explain yourself. Oh, we could host Age Night Road. Oh, he's a good guy oh, actually. Uh, yeah, Age is cool. Yeah, he is. My name is Age Night Road. I have a channel that I'm probably doing World vs World, roaming with a thief on. Age likes to play thief, and we used to, I used to raid with Age, and uh, we made him play Warrior. Because Thief wasn't very good at the time. Mm -hmm. So, he's probably really happy now that Thief is better. Okay. And you could follow me on MMO Inks, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. I still need to fix Twitch because it's come, come being a jerk. If you want to meet me in real life, come uh, let me be come a waiter to, at your restaurant. Yeah, come to the works. Yeah. Just outside Toronto. We can have awkward conversations about. Is it a burger place? Too. It is a burger place, yeah. Ah, uh, the works. I like it already. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. Wait, hang on, you fuckers. Are you trying to troll me? Seems like Age Night Road isn't even online, guys. You're trying to fucking bait me? Bro, bro, bro did that the other day and you fell for it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, Robo. This is why you're an elitist. <laughs>